All right, hello everyone, and sorry there was no music. Uh, by mistake, the microphone was off. Do you want to hear the music? <laughs> we can play it, no problem. <laughs> <coughs> All right, with the music, without the music, Allah, he can do nothing about it and he cannot answer us. Peace of Christ to all of you, you guys, those who are waiting here. The fact we went to the other channel and we were being live in Christian Prince channel. This is channel maybe many of you don't subscribe to it yet. So uh, if you go to Patreon, you will find the page there. Click at the link and you can watch the video and download it. And don't forget to subscribe to that channel, please. Uh, who is Allah? You know, we made many videos about this, but you know, every time we talk about it, we find how silly this religion is. As an example, if we go to the internet and try to find articles made by Muhammadan, who is Allah? This is an article made by Muhammadan. Hmm? Allah is an Arab, proper Arabic name for God. Okay. Muslim believe in God, worship the same one God that the Jews and the Christian worship. <laughs> that's and not only that some of them they went farther they will say to you uh, do you know that the Arab Christian they use the word Allah too you know the Arab Christians this is why they are using the word Allah because they are under the occupation of the Muslims this is why if you move one meter away from the occupation of Muslim you will not see a Christian using the word Allah as simple as that and this is a false translation for the Bible Allah is not the God of the Christians and we cannot find the word Allah in the Bible in any language. I'm talking about the original Bible, which is the Hebrew, the Greek, and the Aramaic, or even, uh, uh, you know, some other languages. So this is a translation, and Allah still is not introduced to us by Muslims. Because look what they say to us. Allah is a unique name with no pearl and no gender. I mean, it says he... And yet no pearl and no gender so why it says in the Quran it is he if he is if you have no gender why you say it is he why don't just say it is Allah in Arabic it says who are ready who which is you know he the same as in English you say he there is she and there is he Arabic is so clear it is he and even you see this is your translation so if Allah is neither he or she why you call him he they, they they lie when they present their God for you. And then <clears throat> they say that it was also used in the form of Il and Ilah or Elohim. Where, where in the call we can find Il and Elohim? What are you talking about? This is Allah in the front of us. Do you see anywhere it says Il Al? Actually, there is Al here, but I don't see Elohim. Al is a word mean God. The same as Il mean God. So who is Lah? This is the real name of Allah. Allah is two words. God Lah. Al. You can go right now in Google and search for God Al. God, the word Al is equal to God. And this is, exists in the Old Aramaic and the Old Hebrew. Which means even the Hebrew, when they used, you used to say Israel, not Israel. Mikael, not Mikael. This is the Old Ancient Hebrew. Then the new Hebrew became Il. So, Elohim. Now, the question is, they are saying to us is the same as also used as Il and Ilah. Where we can find that? Where in the Quran? Why Allah in the Quran never said Elohim? Because Elohim is a plural word. Where in the Quran, why the Quran never mentioned the word, as long as you are saying it's mentioned by David and Moses and Jesus, okay? That's wonderful. Where we can find Elohim in the Quran? Why they are posting something have nothing to do with their books? It's just to deceive you. Now, the question here, who is Allah still is valid and nobody want to answer. If you search for other articles, there's many of them, nobody answer. <clears throat> 
We open this one, discover Islam. Let us see who is here. Islamweb.net, who is Allah? Do you think they will have an answer? No. Speeches, they don't even know what the name means. Who is a Muslim here? He can tell us what the word Allah means. If there is any Muslim here, he knew what the word Allah means. Anyone? Any Muslim? They don't know. What Allah mean? The word Allah. I mean, every word have a meaning. What Allah mean? They don't know because this is not an Arabic word. The same as the word Israel. They do not know what Israel mean. If you ask a Muslim what Israel mean, they don't know. Okay, what Moses mean? He do not know. What Isa mean? He do not know. What Gabriel mean? He do not know. What Jacob mean? He don't know. So what do you know? All the names they have in their cult is a theft, including the name of their God. You know, Muhammad, when he tried uh, to establish a religion, he didn't know what religion really he establishing. He had no idea himself. How we can prove that? You see, <clears throat> uh, all things Muslims they do today is taken from somewhere. As an example, Muhammad he used to fast a day, it's called the day of Ashura. Okay. What is Ashura? Any Muslim can tell me what this is Ashura is? And what Ashura mean? <laughs> what Ashura mean? Do you even know? Or you don't know? I mean, what kind of religion is religion? Why Muhammad he did fast Ashura? Who is a Muslim? Why tell us? If there is any Muhammad in here, one volunteer, and tell us what what this Ashura is, what this occasion here? Why your prophet is fasting this day? Anyone knows? Hmm? They don't know. There is something wrong in the. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know my page. Let me refresh my page here. Ah, okay. You see, there is something wrong in my YouTube. For some reason, it was showing me very um, different numbers. Look at this. <clears throat> uh, Look what Aisha she is saying, not me, not me. This is not a Christian prince saying that. Okay, you want to go after go after Aisha because they will bite me immediately. During the pre-Islamic period and ignorance, Quraysh used to observe the fasting of day of Ashura. Okay, but Quraysh is pagans. Why Muhammad is observing the day of the pagans? Do you see it? Aisha, she is saying, not, not me. So, this is a day where the pagan Arab practice for fasting. Why Muhammad he adopt that day? Here it says, but when he came to the Medina, he fasted on that day and ordered the Muslim to fast it. Hmm. Then Ramadan revealed 
Ramadan fasting became obligation and the fasting of Ashura was given up. I mean, what's wrong with this prophet? How you give a fasting day? I mean, it's uh, what uh, it is expired. Not only that. <clears throat> Muhammad, he claimed that the one who fast Ashura is going to, 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 to erase the sin of one year. Let me see if I can find you the hadith. Um, here we go. Read carefully. And this is Sahih Hadith. This is Jamia al Turmudi. It says here, Sahih Hadith number 752. The Prophet said, Fast the day of Ashura, for indeed I anticipate that Allah will forgive the sin of the year before it. Mean, this is a very powerful day. So how Muhammad he stopped fasting it? And where Muhammad he got the information that Allah will forgive the whole year. I mean, you fast one day, Allah forgive your sin for a whole year. That's easy forgiveness, man. So I go and I do all kind of a crazy stuff and then I end having Ashura and that's it. My sin is forgiven. Yeah, this is Imam Murra, my friend. This is Imam Murra. Yeah, his name is Abu Qutada, Sheikh Ch Shish Kebab Murra, getting your prophet busted. The same as we just get busted, your, pro your friend in the other channel. Go watch the video, not miss it. About your prophet. So, who is this Muhammad and what religion he is starting here? Why he is adopting fasting, claiming that this is a fasting will forgive your sin for a last year. But this, this is the fasting of the pagans. Different hadith says that this is the fasting of the Jews. So which one of them is lying? And if it's a fasting for the Jews, why you adopt the Jews? And how you confirm that this is a true fasting of the Jews? What if the Jews are, the, if, if the Jews are lost? And even Muhammad, he claimed, Allah, he cursed them. He made them pigs, monkeys, rats, lizards, all names. Hmm? Or animals. So why Muhammad adopt something the Jews are adopting? Do we have any Muslim have an answer? How fast in a day can erase a sin of a year? Where Muhammad gets this from? And how this day is not important anymore? My friend, Il is not the name of the God of the Christians. Il is a word mean God. So you are mistaken. So in, in the, the one who is saying the Canadian, yeah, Il is a word used by Aramaic. All those languages are born out of the Aramaic. So Il is a word mean God. doesn't matter which God. However, in the Bible is used. And when the Bible speaks about God, obviously this is the God of the Bible, not any God. All right, so when you say Elohim, you are talking about the God of the Bible, especially the name is mentioned in the Bible. Now, it's a it's just a word. There is no name in the Bible for God. Like when God, when when Moses asked God, "What is your name?" What I will tell my people, He said to him, "Say, I am Yahweh. I am, I am who I am." That's that's not a name. That is just it, it appears like a name. You know, this is how this is how you call me. This is my name. But what is the name? I am. There's no really a name. So Il is just a word mean God, the same as Al. Right? <clears throat> so like a struggle with God, you know. This is why like Jacob and all of them is about God. Mehlalil, you know, and uh, Ishmael, Mikael, Gabriel. But there is no name real, you know. This is the, those people who struggle with God. Il is a word mean God. Now, <clears throat> any Muslim will tell us why Muhammad is fasting Ashura and why he gave up Ashura? How a day can erase the sin of a year we can ignore? What happened? Allah changed his mind? Where Muhammad he received a verse saying, fast this day? Many Muslim can tell us? They don't know. 
And just to show you the contradiction of this cult, where you cannot really follow the cult of Islam, because let's say you like the idea of Islam because it promises you a lot of females, a powerful private part, uh, the women bomb, bomb will be one mile. Okay. They maybe are a sexual, uh, uh, you know, uh, dreamer. Uh, <clears throat> If we read the, the hadith, we will find tons of contradictions on those called hadith. We just showed you that Ashura uh, is a day where the, 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 the pagan used to practice. Right? This is what Aisha she said. If you go back a little bit here, it says that, and this is Sahih Hadith. <clears throat> In different Hadith, it says that this is a day for the Jews. This is the day where Musa says he pass the sea. Hmm. The day of forgiveness. How Muhammad he adopted this day? Any Muslim knows? <clears throat> because this is, will tell us really a lot about Muhammad. Let us see. As long as no Muslim dare to answer. Read carefully with me, and this is Sahih Muslim. They cannot say this is weak. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1130. Ibn Abbas said, blah, 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 blah. Muhammad arrived to the Medina, it's full of Jews. He found the Jews observing the fast of day of Ashura. Do you see it? Who is the one observing this day? Ashura? The Jews. Okay. Muhammad said to them, what is significant about uh, what is what is the special about this day that you observe fasting on it which means muhammad he have no idea what this day is he never heard of it is, is that guys clear is it clear that muhammad he do not know what this day what do you think anyone he think i'm i'm wrong am i heard He didn't know, right? Because if he knew, he will not ask. Do, do we agree? He is asking them clear answer. What is special about this day? You observe fasting. They said, this is the day, is a great day, when Allah deliver Moses Moses and his people from uh, and drawn the, the Pharaoh. Look at this. Muhammad is a prophet of God. He want to teach us about Moses and about Jesus, but he never heard of this day where Moses, he passed over the sea. How he learned that? Did he learn it from Allah? No. He just asked the Jews what this day is. Then how suddenly he make it this day, if you fast this day is better than Fast, you know, like it, it, it's going to uh, erase the sin of one year. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, do you see the madness? How this sin, this day, will forgive the sin of a year, but this guy, he just learned what it is. Do you see how we get this funny, filthy, liar, cult leader busted? So I claim to be a prophet, yet I do not know which day is the day where Moses, he, he, he crossed the sea. 
I claim to be a prophet, but it's not my God who tell me what this day they are fasting. It is a Jew. I walk by the Jews. I say, what this day? They say to me, this is Ashura. This is the day where Moses says he pass. This is the day where God, he, not Allah, where God, he drawn the Pharaoh. Muhammad, he never heard this before. Obviously. Isn't it obvious? Okay, look what Muhammad did. Muhammad immediately adopt the day. Read carefully. So he said to him, and he drowned the Pharaoh and, the, and his people. And Musa's observed fast out of the gratitude, and we also observe it. Upon this, the messenger of Allah said, we are more right, and we are more a closer connection to Musa's then then you have so Allah observed the fasting look at this idiot well what if this guy who told you that is lying to you isn't it the Jews are bad the Quran says they are bad they are liars the most who hate the Muslims are Jews the Jews are corrupt I mean this is the Quran saying that how you take a Jew just told you something and you make it religion because now Muhammad he just added something he heard from a Jew into his religion without investigation and as you see he have no idea what this day is so imagine a Muslim he called me he said to me I'm fasting today I say oh what why you are fasting he said uh, Ramadan I say what is Ramadan he said, Ramadan was the day uh, where Musa, uh, he served from uh, Pharaoh. I said to him, oh, okay, you know what? We are more close to Musa than you. I will fast this day. What is this garbage is? But Muhammad, he is trying to establish a religion. He don't know what to do. They fast, he need to fast too. His people need to fast. So he need to give them something. Hey guys, we have the day to fast. And then he come with the idea that if you fast this day, Allah will forgive your sin for the whole past year, which is stupid. And it doesn't make sense. Because that means I can go and do all kinds of crimes and then just fast a day at the end of the year and bingo. I mean, what a big deal fasting a day. Actually, I fast every day. I fast without fasting. I mean, you know, for me, I eat like uh, once a day most of the time, and which means for the coming 24 hours, I don't eat. That will make my sin gone. That's it. One day. Here is a great example that Muhammad is just a fraud. Without investigation, he adopted the day, and not only that, he made it the great day. Suddenly, it became a day of forgiveness. Just because a Jew, he said that to him. If you go in different hadith, you will see Muhammad, the Jews, they got him busted that he is copying them. So look what he said. The Jews, they start saying, this guy, whatever we do, he tried to do the same. Once Muhammad, he was leading a prayer in a funeral for somebody, one Muslim maybe, because Muhammad, he prayed only on Muslims. The Messenger of Allah used to stand up for a funeral Enter the crops was a place in the grave. Read carefully, guys. A learned Jew. Hmm? A learned Jew. Actually, here, it doesn't say even a learned Jew. It says Hebron or Habron. Habron, what does that mean, Habron? He is like a big scholar of the Jew, like Hacham, you know, not just a rabbi, like a bishop. So, a bishop of the Jews, if we can say the word word, he walked by and he said to Muhammad, this is how we do it. What? This is how we do it. The prophet immediately, he said, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down, 
act differently. Like, what the heck? Just because the guy, he said, this is how we do it. You change the way you pray? <laughs> what happened? You, you know what I mean? So what if the Jew, he said, this is how we do it? But because he feel guilty, he is stealing from them. So if who when, when Muhammad was a praying standing, is that something he learned from Allah or this is he himself making up or he's copying somebody? Obviously, it cannot be from his God because if it's from his God, there is no way he can change it and he say act differently. I mean, what act differently? You change the way you pray just because a Jew walk by and say, this is how we do it. How stupid this action is. Here you notice clearly the fraud of this Muhammad. Literally a fraud. How you change the prayer? I mean, are you authorized even to change the prayer? Is it this is from God? You are just a prophet. Who are you? A prophet of God, he cannot really change the prayer. You know, he have to confirm. He have to receive a message from his God, uh, you know, saying to him, okay, change it. Okay, but first of all, why he told him to do it this way? Actually, there's a music fit with this uh, hadith, but I cannot find it. Let me see. This is how we do it. 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 <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Act differently, act differently. <laughs> Actually, this is not the music I want, but this is a um, there's a there's a there's a, a song I cannot find that fit perfectly with this stupid hadith. Sit down, sit down, act perfectly. I mean, who in the world want to believe that this is a prophet of God? And how and who is authorizing the, this man to change the way the prayer is? Obviously, the way of the prayer is not from God. And he can change it as he wish. And as you see here, he is a changing it just because a man, he said, this is how we do it. Let me see if this song is the one. No, not this one. I'm trying to find the one which is really good with this song, with this hadith. Man... Not this one too. We miss it. Oh boy. No, no. <laughs> I cannot find it. Sorry. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim have any comment about this? Who gave the authority to Muhammad to change the prayer? from two from standing to setting how fast it is to change the way you pray as a muslim just because a jew he said this is how we do it what if muhammad was walking by sorry a jewish walk was walking by and muhammad eating using his mouth and the jew he said to him this is how we do it muhammad he will eat from his nose not only that he says act differently from them did you see it not only he said sit down sit down and act differently. 
They don't they see us. They are looking at us. We should act differently. Because if we act the same, we got busted. Uh, uh, look what Hamza is saying, guys. Look what Hamza is saying to us. Mr. Hamza is saying, the Prophet was inspired. Muhammad never inspired. There's nothing that's called inspiration in Islam. Your Prophet here received messages from Allah through the angel Jibreel. What do, you, what do you mean inspired? Show me where Muhammad inspired. How Muhammad inspired? Not a single verse your Prophet here received from Allah except by Jibreel. Right? And as you see, the Jewish guy just walked by. Why Allah? Okay, you know I will go with you. Guys, did he say he was inspired by Allah? Okay. That means Muhammad was not inspired by Allah when he was praying standing. He was inspired by the devil. Because this is the wrong way. Right? If Allah is the one who told him, sit down, sit down, act differently, then who is the one who said to him, stand up, stand up, and pray this way? The devil? Hmm? Are you there, my friend? What happened to Hamza? 16 says the Prophet was inspired. Yeah, that would be funny because that means the whole Quran is a, is a shish kebab. Because if the, if the Quran is saying Muhammad was inspired, and that means there is no Jibreel. I understand what you are saying. I understand the Quran says uh, Yuha, right? Wahi. But we know what Wahi is. Wahi is a delivery by Jibreel, and which means Allah he used the wrong Arabic word. Because Wahi is inspiration and there is no need for Jibreel. But Muhammad never received inspiration, he received delivery. Which means the Quran again proving to itself to us to be stupid. Because how you say that Muhammad all the Quran received it by delivery and then you use the word Wahi, which means inspiration. And you are right, the word Wahi means inspiration. وَإِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Chapter 53, verse number 4. But Muhammad never received inspiration. He received delivery from a guy, his name is Jibreel. He is the pizza guy. Muslim, they say Muhammad and Moses are the like. Uh, I will tell you why. I will give you an example. Muhammad, he have a great testicles and a penis. Okay. Muhammad, he have a great testicles. We just showed you the hadith. If you remember, in the I don't know how many of you watched the video. By the way, I just made a video 15 minutes ago. You can go to Patreon and click at the link, and you can see it. If you remember that there is a hadith where the Jews accuse Moses that he have a problem with his penis and his testicles. And this is Sahih. All right. So according to Muhammad, this is Muhammad's story. Moses was afraid to expose his private part. Mm -hmm. This guy is like Christian Prince. He don't want to expose his private part. Coward me. Moses, you don't want to expose your private part. Like, is it supposed that prophet of God expose their private part? Go between the people. They will quote for you from the Old Testament there is a prophet who was naked in the desert. He's in the desert. There's nobody there. But this is a man. He lived between his people. He's a leader. Why he need to expose his private part? Because he had been suffering from skurtul herina. What? So one day he took a bath in the water. And he placed his garment upon a stone. Who's telling the story? 
This is coming from Muhammad. You know? The Muslim, they would say, Sabi, uh, uh, it doesn't say Muhammad, CP. It says Abu Huraira, CP. Okay, Abu Huraira, he got it from where? <laughs> the stone began to move on quickly. If, 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 if. The stone now is acting as a thief still in the clothes and the, the underwear of Prophet Moses. Then he followed, he followed it and he struck it with the, uh, 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 with the help of a stone saying, Oh stone, oh my garment, oh my wallet, oh my cell phone. See what? Don't ever let your clothing or wallet or you know, in, a, in a rock next to the beach. So he chased the stone. And he was screaming, saying, Oh stone, oh my wallet, oh my garment. And then, until he stopped near a big gathering of the children of Israel. And this is how they saw that his balls and his penis are very healthy. Actually, in different hadith, it says this. Look at this. So the Muslim, they will not say this is not Muhammad saying there. Narrated, uh, uh, narrated from uh, Muhammad and Messenger of Allah. He is the one saying the story, as you see. So he keep running after the stone. My clothes, stone, oh stone, my clothes. He, he's running now after the stone is naked. So Allah, he made the stone still in his clothes. So every single person in Israel, including women and children in the street, because he's in the street will see Moses private part then and Benu Israel the children of Israel they had a chance to see his penis Moses penis like was wee 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 and then when they saw his penis they say by Allah by Allah Moses does not suffer from any element <laughs> true story you know what? Imagine if we Christians believe in this story, what the Muslim would do to us. Imagine if a Christian prince he come to you one day and he told you, "I put my stone, my clothes in a stone next to the beach, and then uh, I was in uh, uh, in Miami, and uh, you know I want to take a shower. I took a, a like a secluded place because I don't want anyone to see my private part, and then Allah." He made the stone run with my clothes. And then I cho I chased the stone. Until I lie, or, you know, I arrived to the, the, the downtown of Miami or Miami Beach Boulevard. And then all people in Miami Beach they start saying, Wow, look at this man. His uh, <clears throat> is so good, man. Actually, they were saying this is so good to be true. So Muhammad is the same as Moses. This is what they say. I mean, madness. Yeah. Now we go back to our topic. Obviously, Muhammad, he don't have a religion. He don't have God. You see, the God Allah is the God of the pagan Arab in Mecca, he's not an, he's not like a different God. So ask yourself, why Muslim they say that the Arab were pagan yet they worship Allah? Why we only we have almost six hundred people, guys? Come on, invite your if you are a Muslim, invite your four wives and seventy kids. Osama bin Laden, he have what forty five something brothers. If we ask Zakir Naik about this story, uh, why Allah, uh, he did not tell Muhammad about the, the fasting of Ashura. He learned from the Jews. Zakir Naik, he will say to you, Christian Prince, first of all, the Prophet, he have all the information. But he came to the Duith and he challenged them and he was questioning them. It's what like a quiz. You know, you go to the school, they give you a quiz, A, B, C. So the Prophet said to them, quiz number one. What is the they? Hmm? This is what the quiz. 
He said to them, read carefully. What is special about this day? This is what the quiz brother, he, he knew, but he's asking them to see if they are studying very well. Okay, uh, Zach and Nick, but uh, he is asking them if they knew. They are fasting already that day. I mean, pff, hello? Exactly. And you are stupid. They are fighting that day, but maybe they do not know why they are fighting. Ah, so they are driving, but they do not know what they are driving. Uh-huh. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, uh, uh, Dr. Zakanek. And the top of that, the prophet, he said to them, what is significant about that day? Which mean he knew it is significant. If, 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 if. I never, you know what, Zakanek? I never thought about this before. He knew already that it's significant at that day. Exactly. Do you see it said, he said to them what is significant? That means he knew it's significant. Ah, that is top intelligence. And uh, uh, tell us more. And if you read with me, it said, in the day, Muthad, he overcome the Pharaoh and he, a Pharaoh, there was a drone. So it was a drone day. It was a drone day. Is that the drone like you go with this little tiny thing with remote control and Chris and print? I told you one million times, you are stupid. Drone, drone, read the English. You don't speak English, you don't speak Arabic, and you are going to debate me. Okay, I, sorry, I thought you were saying a drone, a drone. I mean, there is an airplane these days, they use it. This is not, you're so stupid. You don't speak Arabic. And, Okay, so now Muhammad, uh, I mean Prophet Muhammad, sorry, he was examining the knowledge of the Jews. But why he did not observe that day before he made this quiz? I will tell you. Because the Prophet, he was going to confirm that this is the day. And he was not sure. So he is not sure about the date, but not about the incident. Ah, your Prophet, he knew about it, but he did not know what the date uh -huh. you know, I never thought about this. So how he can confirm the date? I mean, is a Jew. Don't the Jews, they lie according to Islam? Exactly. And the Jews are big fat liars. So how the Prophet, he accept a Jew statement to choose the day? Maybe this is the wrong day. Christian Prince, first of all, the Prophet, he was asking a good Jew, not a bad Jew. Okay. How you know he is a good Jew? He just went in the city and he saw the people, they are fasting. How he learned that this is a good Jew? I will tell you. A good Jew, when he is answering, he takes his head. As an example, I'm from India. And I'm talking to you now. And look at me. Do you see how truthful I am? Ah, okay. So if he shake his head, that means he's truthful. If he don't shake his head, that means he is a liar. Exactly. And the Prophet was observing that. And actually, if you read in the text, it said, Musa observed fast. And the Prophet was observing what Musa observed. Oh boy. That's a lot of observation here. So just he walked by and a Jewish guy, he said to him, this is the day where Musa was fasting and we fasted. As simple as that. Huh? So if Muhammad walked by and Christian Prince, he was there and Christian Prince, he was a Jew. Hmm? And Christian Prince, he was a drinking uh, black label. And the uh, 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 prophet, he said to him, why you drink black label? Christian Prince, he said to him, because Musa's in this day, he drink a black label. Musa's observe it. Muhammad, he will just observe it blindly. Shouldn't he investigate such a day? And how in the world, Muhammad, he come with an idea that this day will forgive your sin for a year, the past year. Obviously, this person is a fraud. He just copying people around him trying to establish a religion. The same he copied the word Allah from the Arab before him. If you go in the Hadith, you will see this. <clears throat> Uh, 
Sahih al-Bukhari, brother. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the better one. And this is where the black stone is coming. The black stone was exist before Muhammad, before he was born. And the Arab were kissing it and licking it before Muhammad he was born. So those Arab, they always worship stones. And if they find the strange stone, they follow it. They worship it. If you remember, once I have a chat with a Muslim website, I think it's called Convert to Islam something. If you remember, I, I posted on YouTube. I asked them, uh, I have a question, please, about the Prophet. Why he kissed the black stone? The guy in the chat, he said to me, uh, because it's holy. And I said, and why it's holy? He started thinking, 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 and then he gave me the answer. He said, because the Prophet kissed it. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a stupidity more than this? It, what? Why the prophet kissed the black stone? Because it's holy. This is the answer. Okay, why it's holy? Because he kissed it. Didn't know. Didn't know why he kissed it. He kissed it, we kissed it. The same as the Jew. As Muhammad, he said, he saw the Jews fasting the day he fasted. He saw the Arab kissing the stone, he kissed it. And not only that, you will find one of the caliphate, the campaign of Muhammad, he got Muhammad busted. He said, to him, he said after Muhammad's death, uh, He said, this is Omar saying that, and this is Sahih Hadith. I know that they are useless stone. You are useless stone. Omar said, came to the black stone and kissed it. And he said, no doubt I know that you are a stone and can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone. How more you want to prove that this is a pagan practice? Had I not seen Allah Messenger kissing you, I would not have kissed you. <laughs> Do you see it? But look, Muhammad, he said that the black stone is going to come in the judgment day, is going to have eyes. Let us see if we can find the hadith in English. Oh, Lord have mercy. Look at this. Muhammad he claimed that the black stone is going to come in the judgment day and is going to witness for you and is going to have two eyes and a tongue. Do you see it? Now, before I did, you know, uh, use my skills, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a multi-task uh, person, but yet my English is bad and my Arabic is bad. What I can do, I mean, the Muslims always, they are right. Uh, if you remember before, I used my skills in drawing which is fantastic skills just to bring the black stone to life you know we need to bring the black stone to life so Let us bring it to life. I'm just looking for an image. All right. Now oh, this one is small. We want something bigger. We want something big and beautiful. All right.
So according to Muhammad, the prophet of the Muhammadan, who is very powerful in bed and sex, he have the power of 30 and 40 men, who his private part never sleep, as they say, which is proven that he's a prophet. Uh, this stone is going to have two eyes and uh, mouth and tongue. So this stone is going to be like this. You see, Muslims be my witness. I'm trying to make their eye is so the eye of the black stone sexy and you know look. And not only that, I'm going to add lashes. Here we go, just to make you happy. I mean, we don't want a black stone to look bad or something. I'm, I'm, you know, don't take me wrong, please. You see the ashes? I mean, the eyelashes, sorry. Very hot. Okay. So this is the black stone. Hey, hold on, the eyes color here, they are all yellow. I mean, that's not right. So we will make the eyes uh, uh, black inside. All right, that's better. I told you I have a very good skills in uh, a painting. I mean, I'm very, uh, very artistic. And then there's a mouth. And the mouth of the black stone for sure will be hot. I mean, big lips. Perfect for kissing because the Muslim will kiss it. it Looks like a banana for me. But anyway, this is the mouth of the black stone. And now it's time to draw the tongue. Well, tongue usually is going to be red. So this is the tongue. of the black stone very hot and very beautiful and I mean there is no way if you see the black stone after this you will not feel like you want to kiss it and lick it all right you know what I want to convert to Islam after seeing this the Prophet must be telling the truth that the black stone in the judgment day is going to have eyes, is going to have a mouth, is going to have a tongue, and is going to t talk. But hold on. Didn't Omar, he just said, that I know that you are useless and harmless, and there's no benefit from you? And Muhammad saying, no, there is a use, is going to witness for us in the judgment day. So one of them is lying. Which one of them? Uh, and by the way, this picture is not for sale. Hmm? Which one of them is lying? Muhammad or Omar? Omar, he said, this stone is useless. There's no harm from it. There is no use from it. No benefit. Muhammad saying is going to come and have eyes and different hadith says even is going to be, it is the right hand of Allah. So which one of them is lying, Muslims? Who want to tell us? Okay, I'm going to make a drawing and the winner, he will get this uh, picture, okay? <laughs> what a crazy cult. And the funny, they call us pagans. The funny that Muhammad, and he, they call everybody pagan. They call Christian pagan, Jewish pagans, Hindus pagans. I mean, they call everybody pagan. And, and they are not pagans. Yet they are kissing stones, and they believe that those stones are holy. And not only that, let me take a uh, selfie. You know, I want to make a print of this uh, picture in case, like, the museum, they contact me or something, you know, or any art uh, gallery. Okay. Make smile, black stone. We will come back to you later, okay? Take care. Now, listen to this. The black stone, there is no stone in the black stone. Do you know that the black stone does not exist no more? There is a small, tiny stones inside. Let me show you. Look at this picture. Do you see those stones? There's no stones. This, the rest is the black. There is a, is a is wax. This is wax. There is seven or eight little tiny rocks in the size of your finger, and they place them inside that wax, 
and the Muslims are kissing them. You believe it? Look with me. This is a stone. It's a rock. We cannot say a stone. I mean, you know, this is one here. This is one here. I think this is one here. There is, I think there is uh, seven or eight. I forgot really. Where is the, where is this, where is the black stone? So if this is a stone is going to witness for us in the judgment day, shouldn't Allah, he keep it at least one piece and now there's nothing left. And now there are walks in it. They are doing maintenance to it every week. I mean, if this is the stone of Allah, why you need to do maintenance to it? Can't Allah preserve it? Allah, he sent it to you. Eight, eight rocks? I, I forgot to count them before, but I forgot how many. Because the stone of my grandfather have 11 rocks. You know, different stone. Because it is from different village. Muhammad is from different village. They have seven or eight stones. Hmm? What is this? Let me let me show you how they do maintenance to it. <clears throat> there is videos you can watch. And video. I wish I can show you the YouTube videos, uh, but you know there is copyright over them. Uh, let us see. Uh, I will I will look for maintenance. Min. Give me a second. I will search for it. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Here we go, we found them. Do you see how they are burning the wax? Do you see how the smoke coming? This is the black stone and they are adding wax because when people touch it, the wax will come out. So they have to keep adding wax in order to keep those. Look at this here is more clear. Do you see the stone? You see how the real color of the wax is? The stones are black. The wax is kind of dirty brown. Do you see it? This is wax. There's no stone. So how this is can be from God? Just want to show you one thing. Will 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 bring the end of Muhammad and his cult. The Muslim is saying that the Kaaba is the most valuable house. This is the only house for Allah in this earth, correct? Okay. Look with me. The house of Allah is flooded by the sewage. In Mecca and Medina, there is no sewage. Always oh, through history, there is no sewage. They have a septic uh, hole, you know. I mean, there is a hole in, beside the house where all your dirt and poop go there. And actually, this is the case for most of Saudi Arabia. So when the rain come, it's going to take whatever there, whatever in the houses. All the poop will come out, the rain, the dirt, the mud. All of it goes and cover the Kaaba. Look at this. Okay, question. The Muslim, they say, that the house of Allah location is chosen by Allah. I mean, don't you see that your pro your God Allah is a stupid? He could not find better place than a flooding place. I mean, I choose my house in a place where it's going to be flooded and all the poop will come to it. And I am God. And not only that, let us say Allah, maybe he did not notice there is a flood there. Can't Allah, he raised the land. He can say, raise up, go up, go up. The Saudi, after they get the oil, they start spending a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars to prevent the flood from coming to the Kaaba. Why Allah don't solve the problem without the American engineering? When you think it's going to happen, it's happening always. You see the flood of the Kaaba, it, it, it used to happen every year. Uh, but maybe now, I don't know, there is no pictures of uh, the Kaaba. But as you see, there's tons of pictures, you know. 
this is not very old I mean this one is not very old so it was happening all the time because you can tell the age of the thing you see when you see those uh, the building those are new you see the building around the Kaaba the old Kaaba was totally different you know like this is an uh, this is an old picture from the old Kaaba you can tell the different let us see this one here uh, let me let me uh, look for the old Kaaba hold on <clears throat> the old Kaaba it looked really funny and looked really bad. Let me let me find you some pictures. There we go. This is the this is the old Kaaba. Look at this. Look what we have today: marble. And look, this is the Kaaba. Do you see it? few tiny houses around it. that is the cover look at this this is not long time ago do you see it this is the cover small tiny square smaller than my backyard honest to god my backyard is way bigger than the, the, the whole cover and the whole village around it This is the Kaaba. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> and then the money come. And then they start building. You know, the oil. Otherwise, the Kaaba was a very... In, that was ignored by the Muslims. I mean, where, why the Kaaba was looking like this all this time? Because this is this is an image taken taken by a camera. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know when the cameras start to be existed, but it's taken by a camera. So you can imagine how old it is. So until the camera come, this is how the Kaaba looked like. While the Caliphate. Uh, when they occupy Spain, they have the most fancy palaces, fountains, marble, you know? The Caliphate in Damascus, they have the most fancy palaces. The fancy in, in Baghdad, they have the, the Alibaba and the, the 40 Thief uh, uh, Palace. I mean, and look at the Kaaba. now they have marble they have uh, uh, even the air condition have like a, uh, like a, a mist or you know air conditioning i mean if you go right now to the kaaba you won't believe this is the same kaaba what is inside the coop there is nothing it's a room and actually the kaaba used to be without a roof if you have my book you will see the reference that the kaaba used to have no roof and the reason they install a roof for it, uh, you know, the Arab they used to be in competition. There is 26 Kaaba in the Arabian Peninsula. And uh, every town have their own Kaaba. It's the same, uh, you know, uh, it's a marketplace. It's like a bazaar. They buy, they sell there and worship in the same time. So at night, the, the one who don't like your Kaaba, they want to bring customers to their Kaaba. They come at night and they throw garbage from the top of the roof, from the top of the wall. This is why they made the they keep making the wall higher and higher and higher, and then at the end they decide to install a roof. Nineteen twenty-five, uh, George is saying that this picture is not taken nineteen twenty twenty-five. I don't know where he get this from, but maybe this is the correct number. So nineteen twenty-five. This is not long time ago. I mean, let us say uh, less than a hundred years ago. Where is the money of the Muslims? Why the Muslims were you know, building palaces everywhere, their, their kings, the caliphates, and the Kaaba was like, like this? Hmm? But anyway, the most important thing for us 
if the Kaaba is the house of Allah, why the house of Allah is flooded? Do Allah have insurance? I hope so. Hey Allah, did you buy insurance? Because your house is flooded. And the flood happened always over. Look at this picture here. This is this is the Kaaba after like it's getting advanced. Look at this. Market bazaar around it. You see the bazaar? This is market stores. And there is a fence, like a like a fence you use for a for a dog or something. I don't know if you can see it. And people go around and look, the Kaaba is empty. Why why, why there's no people? Nobody. Look. All those they come, you know, they bring to us conclusion that this is a fake religion. Why Muhammad even he adopt this Kaaba? This Kaaba was the Kaaba of the pagan, and suddenly Muhammad he claimed that this is built by Abraham. And by the way, even Muhammad himself and the Muslims, they don't agree it's built by Abraham. They agree that Abraham he rebuilt it. They claim that the first one who built it was Adam. Who who remember where Adam is coming from? Anyone remember? According to Muslims, Adam is coming from India, specifically from Sri Lanka. And this is the footprint of Adam. But as you see, this is a temple for the Buddhas. And the Muslims, they're trying, they are fighting over it, they want to take it because this is for Prophet Adam. But the, 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 the Buddhas don't believe in Adam. Who is Adam? What Adam? This is a Buddha temple. So, they believe that Adam was sent down to India, specifically Sri Lanka. And then Allah, he told Adam to go and do Hajj to Mecca. Now hold on. You know what? I want to go with, the, with this stupid claim. Just give me a second. Uh, <clears throat> I want to go to Sri Lanka. All right. Forgive my ignorance. I'm not so good in geography, so I need to see the map. All right. By the way, if you don't believe me, you can search right now and you will see the Muslims in their websites. They are they are agreeing that Allah he sent Adam to Sri Lanka. All right. So Allah he sent Adam to Sri Lanka and then Adam been ordered to go all the way to Mecca. All right. No problem. No problem, brother. I mean, how convincing the story, okay, how Adam, he went from Sri Lanka all the way to the mainland in India. I mean, he is the first man. This guy, remember, there's no airplane, there is no boat, there is no she, there is nothing. He is just a naked man sent down to earth. And by the way, even they believe that uh, Eve, she was sent down in Yemen or some they say in Jeddah. So imagine what happened. Looked like the parachute, you know, went wrong. One took Adam to Sri Lanka. The other one took uh, Eve to. And how they met again? Uh, don't ask them. So, uh, Sri Lanka is an island. And in order to go here, you have to cross the ocean. I mean, it doesn't matter how small the the the, the area is. Uh, let us say, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm not from that area, but as you know, I mean, I'm I never been there. But let us say it is uh, three, four hours by boat. How how Adam he crossed from here to here to go to, and then after he crossed all the way to India, he have to go look at the, look at the map just to show you the stupidity of the story, which I find it by the way very important for us. So this is a Sri Lanka here. Let us draw a line. Okay. From Sri Lanka, Adam he have to swim in the ocean, then he go all the way to India, 
Then he cross in Pakistan, which is part of India at that time. And then he go to Iran. And then from Iran, he have to go to Iraq. And then from Iraq, he have to go to Saudi Arabia. And then in Saudi Arabia, he have to go all the way to Mecca. And according to them, Adam, he did that 40 times during his lifetime, which means Adam, he go backward, forward. He go back to Sri Lanka. His house is in Sri Lanka. He's a Sri Lanka. And here, by the way, you notice the roots of the Hindu religion. Because why in the world, from all religions, all locations, the most time they choose Sri Lanka to be where their father is coming from? Are you getting what I'm saying? What made them think that they're the first man, he is an Indian? Because that make him an Indian. And this poor Adam, he went backward, forward, 40 times. Again, number 40. You remember? The prophet was given the power of 40 men in bed. Here we go. Adam now, he went to Mecca and he went back to Sri Lanka 40, 40 times. Here, we go back to the black stone. Do the Hindu have a stone which they believe have to do with their God? Anyone remember? What stone is that? Which is black and it's a sexual part. What they call that stone? Who is here from India? He can help us. What the stone which the Hindu, they have in their temple, which is a sexual stone. Shiva stone, lingam, whatever you call it. This is exactly what the black stone is. The black stone was made in the shape of a vagina. Did you notice? Did you ask yourself why the black stone is in the shape of a vagina? I mean, what this shape for? Where, where, where this shape is coming from? Why well, it's like this? I mean, even now, uh, there's a small, tiny rocks inside it. But yet, they have, the frame is in the shape of a vagina. Let us go back to the black stone. This is the black stone, as you see. Look at the shape. What is the shape is about? Why it's like that, I mean? What is this? In the book of Tafsir, it says that the black stone was whiter than milk, but it was darkened by the sin of the women period. Who is a Muslim here? He want to challenge me to prove that this is what it says in your books. Any Muhammadan? The women, period. Why? Because this is the fertility stone. Sexual stone. So women who they are not having babies, uh, they go and simply they touch the black stone after touching their private part when they have their period they don't want to have period period no more because period means you are not having a baby so uh, in order to to have a baby you have to go to the god of fertility and this god he have a stone in the shape of vagina The women they place their hand in the front in, in, in inside it after they touch their private part and the men after that they come and they insert their private part inside the black stone 
so the women one day they will get a baby if you go actually in the hadith you will see it says that the Arab even after Muhammad became a prophet and he controlled the Kaaba they used to go around the Kaaba totally naked the Muslim they will say to you all oh, those are the pagan you know those are not the Muslims but the Muslims they used to be one of them anyway and why they are going around the Kaaba naked during the lifetime of Muhammad and he is in control of Mecca now hmm? what was the practice where people go naked read it I'm not saying that this is Sahih Muslim and this is Sahih al-Bukhari this is al-Bukhari here why they are going naked what is the, what is the religion what, what what is the religion required or what kind of religion it's required if you go inside the Kaaba, around the Kaaba you have to be naked what is the practice there hmm? So here you see that Allah, as a God, He is a, a stolen name from God, who Muslim today they are trying to deny, which is the Moon God. And the funny, you will see somebody. Well, how the Muslim they worship the Moon God, but the Quran says don't worship the Moon. Well, who said the Moon God is worshiping the Moon? The Moon God is the one in control of the Moon. The God who is in control of the moon and the sun God is the one who is in control on the sun. So each one of them he is in control of certain element. Do you understand guys what I'm saying? When we say the moon God doesn't mean that the moon is the one who is the God. The moon has a God. He is the moon God. The sun has a God. He is the sun God. The reason the Arab, they worship the moon god, because they hate the sun. The sun kills their animals, make them thirsty, extreme heat. They are living in the extreme hot desert. The moon is nice, it's kind, it's the time we sit, have fun with family, and we talk, and we make poetry, and we sing. It doesn't harm us. So there was a competition between the sun god and the moon god. Those who worship the sun, God, are those who live in, you know, like a cold area. Which makes sense. Because simply, they need sun. It's cold. And those who live in a very warm, hot area, they worship the moon god. However, the religion, they were in competition. Between which one to worship, the sun god, the moon god, which means you might find somebody who lives in a cold area and he is worshipping the moon god. And vice versa. And the number of those who worship this god or that god, it changed by time. So sometimes the majority became the moon god worshipper and sometimes the sun uh, god worshippers. Uh, <clears throat> Until now, look, how many people are watching? Not a single Muslim will tell us where the word Allah is coming from. They don't know. They try to insert it by ilah, the word ilah. Ilah does not mean, it's not a name. Il, ah, il, God, God, this is God, the God. Where is Allah? If you search right now for the word la, in Google, you will find that lie is the moon god. You know, it is simply the moon god. And by the way, the name is not the problem. The problem, they still observe the same religion. The Kaaba, the black stone, praying in the direction of the Kaaba, it's the same cult. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? 
because did you watch the video which we made just an hour ago before we start don't forget to watch it please because Muslim they made a review of my book sex and Allah and they are exposing me and I'm proud of it I'm proud of their review actually don't forget to go uh, uh, watch it it's in the Christian Christian Prince uh, page I don't know if the admin can post the link for you do we have any Muslim want to say anything how does God function now let us go to something else. should I stop guys and continue tomorrow or we continue who who's getting tired who's getting tired anyone getting tired yeah, this is the link, you know, Phil is posting it, click in it, and you can watch it later. You know, it's just don't forget to subscribe to that link because this is just another account of mine as a backup. We have many backup accounts. Subscribe there and you can watch the video later. And don't forget to download it, by the way, in your, and post it in your, it, because it's very good video. The Muslims are my helpers always. You know, they try to, uh, to fight me, but they are my help. Watch it and die laughing. Uh, <clears throat> Nobody is tired? You are not tired, but you talk a lot. All this time you are talking, you are not tired? Unbelievable. I thought you are tired. <laughs> All right. Do we have any Muslim? Want to say anything before we continue? Who is here first time? Are you here first time? If you are here first time, I advise you to leave because you will be addicted and you will keep coming and coming. It's not good. Just just go. Trust me, you will be addicted. Don't be first time here. First time mean, mean second time, third time. And then your wife, she will be upset from you because you spend too much time listening to me. And then she will call me. Do you remember the lady she called me, guys, about two weeks ago? Who remember her? <laughs> she was upset because her brother he don't switch the channel all the day he's listening to me and she's asking me please please <laughs> so I'm just warning you all right so you know uh if we try to understand who is Allah, forget about the name. What about the nature of Allah? When you debate Muslims, if you watch the, what it's called debate between uh, brother David Wood, which really I admire very much because this gentleman, he is doing his best to reach out to people to explain to them what the cult of Islam is. In his debate with a guy, his name is Mimi Hijab. When David Wood, he said to him, Allah has parts. What Mimi Hijab, he said to him, who said so? So Muslims, when you speak to them, you cannot learn about Islam from a Muslim. They deny in a second. Anything will be embarrassing. Anything is embarrassing to their cult, immediately they deny it. Which means when we debate Muslims, we are not really debating we are we like it's like a, a, you know uh, corner in you it's not a debate it is you and me playing like uh, uh, you know uh, cat and rat hide and seek there's no debate a muslim will never give you a truthful answer unless he is from isis those people there they don't care they give you the answer as it is yes Islam says this but those who they are living in the West they are ashamed of their cult and they are allowed to lie let me show you something here because many people they are unaware that, like you think that when you are talking to a Muslim he will tell you what Islam is about I mean if a person he is religious he have a beard obviously he's religious right I mean come on he will not lie no those Muslims they are, they are allowed officially to lie uh, actually they lie to each other this is a business this is the business they do always uh, Muhammad he said 
that Allah he give a license for lying in three cases a Muslim is allowed to lie in three cases what is the lies which he's allowed to do it is not lawful to lie except in three cases something the man tell his wife to please her so you, are, you can lie to her like she asked you did you marry somebody else in the top of me you say no for sure I love you you are the only one that is a good lie as an example lie during war and Muslim believe that they are in war with us and this war will continue until judgment day so a Muslim when he talked to you about Islam he is allowed to lie for this is war you know and then lying to fix problem between people so what we learn from Muhammad is that Allah approved lying lying the wife lying to his uh, to his wife the husband lying to his wife which is awful and ugly and disgusting imagine you marry a man and his God saying to him lie to her so you have no idea if he is saying the truth or not and he will not feel guilty he will never feel guilty lying to you so good luck go and marry a Muslim and then lying during war during war the Quran says that Allah he will pursue against us until judgment day that is war Muhammad he said I've been ordered to fight all mankind and kill them until there's either they say there's no God but Allah and he is a prophet and they convert and they pay the zakat and they pray as he pray and they, and they, and they uh, uh, worship as he worship and they slaughter as he slaughter and then and only then he will stop shedding their blood and stealing their money if you go in the Quran let me show you this because maybe this is not enough <clears throat> let us hope that this website is working you know I apologize sometime I want to go live on air but my upload speed is bad you know my internet here is really good uh, speed but the upload speed sometimes is horrible which is I need you know I do not need the 400 uh, download speed I need uh, 10 you know gigabyte uh, upload speed so my my download speed is so fast but my upload speed is horrible okay the website of the kingdom of jordan is dead let us see again try again here we go it's, it's working all right if we go to chapter 3 verse number 28 this is the official government website of the king of jordan this is why it doesn't work all the time like the king of jordan you don't function In chapter 3, verse number 28, this is called the chapter of Taqiyah. A Muslim is allowed to practice Taqiyah. And what is Taqiyah? Read carefully with me. This is not my interpretation. This is the cousin of Muhammad giving interpretation. A Muslim, he is not allowed to take non Muslims as a friends. And the Quran and the Muslim call us the hypocrite. We are the hypocrites. Uh, or the Jews or Christians as a friends. So as become mighty and honorable, so a Muslim, he cannot respect you really. So when a Muslim, he says, I respect you, he's just playing taqiyya, you know, lie, he's lying. He can say it, but he don't mean it. In a preference to the believer, the one who is sincere, sincere about what? Sincere about, you know, uh, accepting you with honor, respecting you, or taking you as a friend. So the one who is sincere doing that, Seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites and disbelievers as a friend, he has no connection with Allah. So if a Muslim, he says to you, I respect you, I honor you, and he mean it from his heart. He is no Muslim. That's it. He's out of Islam. 
It's okay if he say it, but he don't mean it. Just to deceive you. All right? So he has no honor. Read carefully. He has no honor, mercy, which means Muslim can kill him because now he's upstate, or protection. No mercy, no protection, no honor. So Muslim, they will humiliate him, kill him, rape his wife, because he is taking the Christians and the Jews as a friends. And then says, taking it a less, but yet, you know, guard yourself against him. So, okay, well, I live in America, and, uh, you know, they ask me, uh, do you, uh, do you uh, support Mujahideen or you support America? Do you, if, you, if a war happened, which side you will take? ISIS or USA? Prophet Muhammad or America? What I will say? I have to guard myself. I say, sure, USA. Save yourself from them. Taking as it were security, as, but it's not really about security. Saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while with while your heart is like this. Have you ever saw an evil cult more than this? So a Muslim he will say to you, We are friends, I respect you, I really respect Christians, I really appreciate many, I have many Christian friends. But a Muslim, he cannot take Christian friends. Because if he take Christian friends, he is out of Islam. And we can show that in the Quran in many places. Even He cannot even take his own family as a friend. If we go here, This is chapter 3, verse number 28. And if you go down a little bit, you will find chapter 5. This is many places, all those verses, by the way. It says you cannot take Christians, Jews, you know, as a friends. As simple as that. But if you go here, there's a verse speaking specifically about us as a Christians. Read carefully. This is the Muslim translation, not mine. Because the Muslim, they will say, is lying. You know that. O who you believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and or protectors. Okay, so they cannot take you as a friend. So if a Muslim saying to you, I have, I'm, I'm your friend, you will be naive to believe because he's not allowed. And look, not only that, it says, and he amongst you who turn to them in a friendship, he is of them, which means he is not a Muslim no more. So if you really mean it to be friend to you, he became an apostate. Do you see it? I'm not making I'm not making it up. This is the Muslim translation. This is the Muslim translation. This is a Muslim website. It's not Christian Prince translating. Muslims say he's saying doesn't mean not only that if you go to chapter 9 let us see <clears throat> if you go here actually let us take this verse here In chapter 58, verse number 22, it says, you will not find one single Muslim. He will take those who oppose Islam and he will love them. Even if they are their fathers and their sons and their clan, you will not find one Muslim. He love you. You oppose Islam. You refuse Islam. Even if you are a father of a Muslim guy, he is not allowed to love you. Who is saying that? This is their book. Who is translating? It is them.
So who is this God Allah? There is no God Allah, this is Muhammad. Those he is seeking revenge from those who rejected him. Why Muhammad did not mention the Hindus, go fight the Hindus, Allahu Akbar? Because they, they are not there. I never even heard of them. Right? Why he is concentrating in killing the Christian and the Jews? At least Christian and Jews. The Muslim they claim that the Christian and Jews they worship the same God. Okay. So why you concentrate in killing those who worship the same God, but not on those who don't worship your God at all? Because he is seeking revenge. They exposed him. They knew he's a liar. He have to defeat them, otherwise they might overcome him. It's like killing all the witnesses. Killing all the witnesses. Muhammad, he said, if I became victorious, which is, it looked like he's not sure that Allah will make him victorious. If I became victorious, I am going to kick the Arab. Oh, hold on, something happened here. Uh, <clears throat> we have a crash in the program. Am I heard, guys? Am I still heard? Okay, good. Because uh, you know, the, suddenly the program I have here stopped and crashed. All right. Let us see. Okay. Muhammad, he said, <clears throat> if I am victorious, I'm going to kick and cleanse. I will cleanse the Arabian Peninsula from the Christians and the Jews. Why? Simply let us kill all the witnesses. All the witnesses who they expose me. Read it. And the funny they say. Uh, like uh, there, there is a, there is a Abdul in the speaker corner. He said the Christian prince is terrorist. He support the crusade. Well, did you ask yourself what the crusade is? The crusade you attacked us. The crusade attack back. So look at this. They attack you and then they play victim. For six hundred years after Christ, there is no crusade. No crusade. You attacked us, you took our cities, you took Jerusalem, you took our churches, and you forced jizya and the Christians. And when we do crusade, we are terrorists. But you doing jihad, taking our land, it's okay. They call it opening. You see the hypocrisy? Muhammad cleansing the Jews and the Arabian and, and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula is not a crime. But if the Spanish, they kicked out the Muslims from Spain, it's a crime. It's a genocide. They are evil. You see? So this religion, this cult, they play victim all the time. Islamophobia, what Islamophobia? They, they want to play victim. Because now they are in a weak stand. So they play victim so they can earn support from the stupid ones who they think really are victims. The fact we are the victims how many articles are written uh, you know that the Indian in India they are discriminated <clears throat> right Well, this is another stupid uh, comment of uh, of Al Qurtubi. You know, Islamic books is full of stupidity. You know how he will knew so, someone he wasn't exist. I mean, stupidity. What you can say? Uh, in India right now, everybody's speaking about even Trump. 
the you know uh, uh, or the Chinese you know like the Indian they don't going to give uh, citizenship to the Muslims which is not really true but guess what there is millions of Hindus and Christians who work from India they work in Saudi Arabia Qatar Emirates, Bahrain they don't give them a citizenship even if they are working there for 30 40 years even if they are family they are born there they don't even have a green card which means residency they have just temporarily visa working visa so why if you are a person who live in India for many years you have the right to take citizenship just because you are a Muslim but if a Hindu he live in a land which is Islamic land he have no right even to die there do you know that if a Hindu or a Christian or non-Muslim he die in Saudi Arabia he is not allowed to be buried there actually there's an article you can go and search it it's called you can work in Saudi Arabia but you cannot die there you cannot die there there's no graveyard for Hindus when where is the graveyard of Hindus there's millions of Hindus who die I mean work there and God knows how many thousands through years they die during the time they are in Saudi Arabia they will not let them bury it in Saudi Arabia not a single graveyard for a Hindu so they discriminate you not only they don't give you a citizenship they don't even give you a grave Yeah, history go and see what they did to the Greek people what they did to to, to Constantinia this is our city what they did to Romania what they did to all of Europe what they did to the Armenian what they did to the Syrian what they did to the Assyrian but nobody play victim as they do so you are Islamophobe you are a bad person you know every day every day every Sunday there's attack in some churches somewhere in the world especially in Africa Nigeria uh, uh, Ghana uh, Burkina Faso I mean everywhere ironical everywhere no one will go watch your communist religion channel keep blocking we Muslims communist that's funny <laughs> no my friend you are you are the communist because you are sharing a stone to be kissed by everybody this is this is communism isn't it, this is communism stone worshiping why you don't call me mr omar you are the communist but in a bad way you share women you share slaves you kidnap women, do you exchange them? Do you want to show your reference? Hmm? What do you think? <clears throat> Hadith erase erase sin. Ah, fever. Yeah, fever erase sin. Yeah, I mean Muhammad have many stupid stories. Like, you know, uh, if you have a fever or a sin, and not only that, uh, Muhammad, he said, I mean, he, this guy is mentally ill. Like, there's a hadith that if you have a three kids, and they die in fire, you go to heaven. What is that? <laughs> Muhammad, he have all kind of ideas. Let me show you this. I remember once a Muslim he was debating me and he wanted to get me busted supposedly. Let us see. Even Muhammad, he said that the one who die by plague or by drowning, he is a he's a murderer. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Do we have any Muslim in the chat? Except those Muslims who are calling me names. And suddenly I became a, uh, I became a, a communist. <laughs> Armenians were the first Christian. No, that's not true, my friend. Armenian, they are not the first Christian. The first Christians are from the city of Antioch. For sure, we are talking about it after the disciple, which means... The first Christians are the Jews. The first Christians are the Jews. After that, the first city became a Christian is Antioch, a city. Uh, which means, generally speaking, the first Christians after the Jews, it was the Aramaic. And then Christianity spread to many, many countries. Anyway, this is not important really who is the first Christian, who is the second. The important is, are you Christian or not? No, that doesn't change anything. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, there is, there is, there is millions of, of, of stories Muhammad he come with about reasoning to go and seek forgiveness or get forgiveness as you know just to show you one of the forgiveness which is obviously pagan practice Muhammad claim that if you uh, if you touch the black stone and the Yemeni corner which I mean the, the corner of, uh, of the Kaaba it's called Yemen corner and uh, if you do that that is going to erase your sin as you see, which is obviously a very pagan practice and cannot be from a true God. How in the world anyone will, will believe that if I touch a stone, my sin is forgiven? How easy it is. The same as we saw in the hadith about Ashura, the one who fasted Ashura, Allah forgive the sin for him for the past year. So you, what you do? You go do whatever you want the whole year, and then you fast one day, and all the sin is gone. Yeah, and you can eat in your mother's house. Exactly. If you, you know, I mean, I mean, Muhammad, he have tons of uh, of stories. Like, I look at this one here as an example. Uh, <clears throat> the one who says praise be to Allah let us see here if you say to Allah he said to them uh, who of you like to earn a thousand good deeds a thousand good deeds How you can earn that? And Muhammad, he have a solution. They said to him, how we can earn a thousand good deeds? Like, how we can do that? He said, by saying subhanallah a hundred times. <laughs> I mean, what is this? You say Subhanallah. One hundred times you get one thousand deed. Well, what is what is how, how stupid is that? And not only that, good deed will be recorded for him, or one thousand sin will be forgiven. Okay, how many sin we do a day? There's no way we'll do one thousand sin. So what you need to do if you are Abdul Muhammadan? After you sleep around, uh, sell drugs, and do all in Islam anyway, that is lawful. But let us say you do all kind of filthy stuff. 
before you sleep, brother, say subhanallah, 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 and that's it. Your sin is gone. Do you see it? Obviously, this person is making things up. This is going to be true. God will forgive my sin, all the sin I did, a thousand sin, just because I say subhanallah 100 times. That's very easy recipe. Hey, hold on. Look what uh, Mr. Uh, why you don't call me, my friend? Omar. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> Look what he said. What is the problem? Catholic pray 100 Hail Mary in their prayer. Yeah, but they don't say that this will forgive their sin. They are praying. They pray a hundred, they pray one, one million, one million. They are just praying. Nobody said to them, if you do that, your sin is forgiven. And by the way, you took the rosary, you Muslims, you took it from the Christian. This is why the rosary, you Muslim, you carry, have 33 stones, the age of Jesus. 30 stone in the necklace and the three stones at the end of it. That is the age of Jesus. Everything you have is a theft. Everything you have is a theft. You have no religion. Your God Allah is a theft. This is not the name of the God of the Muhammadan. He stole it from the Arab. Muhammad do not know who is his God. If I ask you, Mr. Uh, Omar, who is your who is Allah? What Allah mean? Guys, do you think Omar he knew what Allah mean? Okay, listen to this. In the front of everybody, I challenge Omar to tell us either by calling me or in the text what the name Allah mean. I'm listening. Are you there, Omar? Are you searching Google? Don't tell me that you are worshiping Allah all your life and now you do not know what the Allah mean. What Allah mean? We don't know. We don't know. They don't even know the name of their God. They don't know. He is searching Google, by the way. He is searching Google. What Allah mean? We don't know. And this is a clear evidence that this cult is a stupid cult. I mean, people worship God, they do not know. Look, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just guys, look at this. Let me take a selfie, not snapshot. I want to take a selfie for you, Omar. I will put you in the screen because you are fantastic, my friend. Guys, look at this answer. Hold on. Thank you, Omar, for the answer. I appreciate it, really. You are my helper, man. We really, really appreciate you. You are the best. Okay. Omar, he said. Let us see. Where is the snapshot Ryan Khan? Unbelievable. I took a snapshot. I cannot find it. Okay, here we go, we found it. Let me put it for you in the screen so you can see how funny. The second you become a Muslim, you are funny. Allah is the name of God Almighty in Arabic. <laughs> My friend, I'm asking you what the word Allah mean. You tell me is the name in Arabic? Are you serious? Is that a stand, stand, uh, stand, what they call it, stand alone? Uh, stand, what, I don't know, what they call it? Comedy show? I'm asking you what Allah means. You tell me this is uh, Allah is an Arabic name. What Allah means, man? Listen carefully. I know you don't use your brain usually, but today you have to use it. What Allah means? 
Allah personal name of God. Okay, so what Allah mean? Okay, personal name, we got it. Guys, Allah is a personal name. What Allah mean? They don't use their hand. They don't use their, their, their fingers. They don't use their head. They don't use anything. Stand up comedy? Uh, stand up comedy. No, he said down, sitting down now. So after searching in Google, you come to me with this answer that Allah is an, a personal name. What do they mean? No idea. So you call him Allah, you do not know why? What What this mean? What is the name is coming from? There is Muslim Indonesia says that they regret leaving Islam because of you. They made YouTube to deceive. They made YouTube to deceive Muslims again. What Abdul they don't dare to be okay. No problem. I mean, Muslim want to help Mr. Omar. Mr. Omar he gave up. That's it. He do not know what his God name mean. What Allah mean? It's really funny. I mean, you ask him, what is the name of your, what is the name of your God, Allah? I mean, he says, it's the name of my God, Allah. The same as the Muslim website, you know, you ask them, why the Prophet kissed the black stone? They say, because it's holy. We say, why it's holy? They say, because he kissed it. Any Muhammadan want to help Mr. Omar? I mean, a simple question. And look, the other Muslim, they will say to you, Allah is the creator. Okay, my friend, I'm not asking you what he do. I'm asking you what the word Allah mean. Allah is the same word in Arabic, speaking Christians and Jews for God. No, not a true. If you, wanna, if you mean that Arabic Christian, they use that word because they are under the occupation of the Muslims. There's nowhere we can find the word Allah in the Bible. You can find it maybe in a false translation. And this is not my question. My question is what Allah mean? We don't know. Used by who, not used by who? Not my question. You worship a God, you call him Allah. Shouldn't you know what the word mean? Is it a shame that a very simple thing about the name of your God you do not know? Is it a shame that we look in the internet, we find all the rubbish? Allah coming from Elohim, Allah coming from Ir. Where, where, where is that from? What Allah coming from Elohim? Still, what is that a name? Or is it just a word mean God? You must have you claim it's a, it's a name. As long as it's a name, okay, what the meaning? Mean the God, the Ilah? No, because ilah, you see, you are when you pronounce it, when you pronounce it, let me show you. I don't know why my program is being crushed. Hold on, uh, maybe too many. Right, let's close this one. <clears throat> All right. If we pronounce the name of the God of Islam, it is like this. Al Al La Al in Arabic today is equal to the La is the name. But this is in Arabic today. Al is a word meaning God. So if you are saying that La is a word meaning God and El is already a word meaning God, that's mean God, God. <laughs> Allah mean God, La. 
Yeah, sometimes this program freeze. See? Godla. Al is an old ancient word in Hebrew Aramaic where it means God. As an example, how we can prove that? Let me show you. <clears throat> I will show you from the Quran. The Quran said that Allah is the best of the Creator, comparing Him to who? To Baal. And the word Baal, the way it's written today, is not really the word it is as used to be before, but we will go with it. Baal. Baal. Al. God Ba. So those are two words, you know, they are merged together. The name of the God is Ba. The word God is here, Al. And look what the Quran confirmed. Muhammad is bragging about his God, saying that he is the best of the creators, which means he believed there's many creators. Because you cannot be the best of the creators unless there is a creators. Right? I mean, if I say to you I was the best student, that's mean I am not the only student in the school. Otherwise, I'm lying. If I am the only student, it's a lie. Correct, guys? If I say I am the best student and I am the only student in the, the whole school, that's it. And, you know, it's, it's a lie. How you can be the best student? To be the best, you have to be one of many. So, when the Quran says comparing Allah to Baal, there's a competition. Baal is a God. Allah is a God. Which one is better? Allah is saying, I am better than Baal. As simple as that. And what is better? What he, what he is better? He is the best of the creators, which means Baal is a creator, Allah is a creator, but Allah is the best. If Baal cannot create and Allah comparing himself to Baal, that would be stupid. How you compare yourself to someone he cannot do anything and his fake is that exist. The second you say I am the best of the creators, it's meaning you approve that there is many creators and you are just the best. Which means there's many gods, I am the best of them. Right? If you go in the Quran, the first chapter in the Quran, I'm not going to take you far away. Al-Fatiha. Look with me. Anyone who speaks Arabic, he can notice that here it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Okay, hold on. This is Allah in the first sentence. And this is Allah in the second sentence. Anyone notice what happened? What is the difference between the first Allah and the second one? Anyone notice something missing? What is missing? <clears throat> Guys, I'm going to speak a little bit farther from the uh, from the, the computer because my eyes really hurt. They are burning. But tell me please, is my voice is still good? Is my voice still good? You know, I, I, I took like a little bit away because my eyes really hurting. You hear me good? I'm trying actually to avoid to look at the computer, but uh, I mean, we have to. Uh, there is something missing, Alif, correct? Those who speak Arabic, they knew. This is Alif. You will see it in the beginning of the letter. Let me try to make it thin here. You see here, this is Alif here in the beginning, but it's not exist here. What happened? What happened? Very simple. Because this is not part of the name. Al 
Al is just a word being God. It's not part of the name. You can take it off. So look what happened. The difference between the first Allah and the second one, the first one saying Allah, Allah, the second one saying li lah. So alhamdulillah, let me let me type it for you. Lillah. Huh? Why? Because I'm saying thanks to li, li in Arabic mean two. Let me break it for you in English. Or let's first do it in Arabic. Li, oh, let us switch to Arabic. Li mean two. So I can add the letter L before any name and that will make it belong to you. So I say lahu, uh, 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 to him. Laha, to her. All right, lahum, to them. Belong to them. So li, to make something belong to someone else. All right, so alhamdulillah. Thanks to li, mean to lah. Oh, sorry, we are typing li lah in English will be li. Ah, uh, sometimes this thing freeze, you know. Li lah. Thanks to all. Thanks to lah. Here there's no Allah. Just the plain name. Are we clear? And that explains why the first one have Allah. The second one, I mean, both of them is Allah, but one without L, one with L. Okay, what happened? You cannot take letters from the name. A name will, will never be changed. So here, there is a change. Why? Because this is the original name, Lah. So thanks to Lah. If there is any Muslim want to say anything? And actually, if you read this prayer here, which is, I find it very funny and stupid. Look at this. Supposedly, the one who is speaking here is Allah. Okay. How Allah is talking, he says, in the name of Allah. Is, isn't it this is by, by itself is stupid? Where do you get all of this? It's front of you. It's it's just Arabic. Read it. Verse number two. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. There, there is a website. It's called, uh, I think, Quran. You, you click at the word. They will pronounce it for you. Click on it. Go there. It says, Alhamdulillah. Lillah. Li mean two. La. This is the name of your God. As, an ex as simple as that. Uh, look at this. In the name of Allah. Well, like I am Allah. How I say in the name of Allah. Imagine how people will laugh at a Trump. If you go, he says in the name of Trump. You know what I mean? You see, if the if the Quran saying Allah, he said to Muhammad, pray like this, like Jesus, they ask him, how we pray? He said to them, our father, say like this, pray like this, our father out of heaven. No, this is not the case. There's nowhere it says anything, introduction, pray like this. Suddenly, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and then look at this stupid story here. Praise be to Allah. Like who is the one saying praise be to Allah saying praise be to Allah and then he repeat again the same as he say and the, the Lord of the two words because they believe in the genie and the human being you know and then he repeat the same exact word he just said there this is can't be God I mean you just said the most gracious the most merciful 
Why you are seeing it after two seconds? You did not, you just started the car. The one who was talking here, somebody, he's out of words. He's trying to make something. You just say the Rahman Rahim. Why you are saying Rahman Rahim? And then here you will find something very funny and very fishy. It says, Ahdina Sirat Al Mustaqim. What Sirat mean? Who is a Muslim can tell me what Sirat mean? No, my friend, I'm not saying translation I fabricated. I'm saying your Quran is a stupid. I don't care for a translation. I'm trying you know, for me, I read Arabic. You are the one who is reading translation. Lead us to the straight way. What is that straight way? What's Sirat? Sirat is a bridge. Muhammad, he learned from the Sabian that there is a bridge and this bridge will take you to the sky and those who they are committing sin, their legs will go down the bridge and they will be burned depending on how much sin they commit. Sirat is not an Arabic word. Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim ghayr al maghdubi ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wa al dalin. Okay, the bridge of those who you bless them, favor them. Let us see what Sirat means from the Muslims' interpretation. So Muslims, they will not say oh, Christian prince making things up. You know them. Even if you show them, they say you are making things up. So what about you don't show them? <clears throat> Give me a second. <coughs> Let us see. I will try to open some interpretation for us so we can read together and they will not say, you know, he's making things up. As they always do, as usual. Let us see. Who is a Muslim here in Arabic? He is willing to call me and read for us and translate. Any Muslim? You translate, I will not translate. Anyone? <clears throat> Any Muslim is willing to call? What Sirat mean? Is that a bridge to heaven or a bridge to hell? Who is a Muslim willing to answer? When the Quran said, Ahdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Anyone?
I don't see anyone. <clears throat> Let us see. Just to show you that this is a bridge. Uh, actually, some Islamic books they say that a sirat is a bridge to the, to hell, not even to heaven. But we will go and see. Uh, here we go. Read carefully with me, guys. Just to show you the stupidity of this religion. Death will be brought in the day of resurrection and made to stand on the Sirot. This is the word Sirot. Okay. What the word Sirot is? Bridge to hell. Bridge over hell, sorry. As I said, when you walk, if you are supposedly you did not pray much, etc. So the more you are a uh, sinner, uh, the more you will be burned because your feet will go down in the bridge. So there is people who will go inside hell. They will almost never go inside hell. And depend how bad you are, you will be burned. So look, this is their translation saying, the bridge over hell. In the book of Fath al-Bari, it says, uh, uh, Hafiz ibn Hajar, uh, it says, it will be said, O people of paradise, and they will look like they will be tired, afraid, etc., and then it will be said to them, all people of hell, and they will look, uh, hoping that blah, 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 the hadith. And then it says, then the command will be given for it. It will be slaughtered on the Sirot. So Allah will, be, will slaughter death, which is very stupid to believe. I mean, how you can slaughter death? Is death is a person? Yes. In Islam, death is a person. So Allah will bring him over the bridge and he will slaughter him. So how you say, Ahdina Sirat al Mustaqim? If everybody wanna go in the Sirat, it's a bridge. <laughs> and this bridge is over hell, and actually will go through hell. You see, in the Quran it says, "Wama minkum wa illa wariduha." Every one of you will enter hell in Islam. وَمَا مِنْكُمُ إِلَّا وَرِدُهَا Chapter 19, verse number 71. Not one of you, look at the Muslim translation, will pass over it. It doesn't say that. It says وَرِدُهَا. How we can get them busted that this is not pass over it? We go to the interpretation. Here we go. Again, this is Quran, chapter 19, verse number 71. Read carefully. 1971. And again, the one is talking here is not Christian Prince. Liar is lying, brother. Huh, let us see. Let us hope this website will work. Because you have to click like 20 times to make it open. Come on, open man. What do you what can you what you can say? It's owned by the King of Jordan. Nothing function in that country. Starting from the king. I come on. Here we go, we have to wait. The Christian Orthodox chant says that Christ he stepped death by this, yes. Yeah. Okay, 
وَهَبَ الْحَيَاةَ لِلَّذِينَ فِي الْقُبُورِ This is the chant you are talking about. We are just waiting for the website to open. But this is not about going over bridge. This is about the Messiah. He, you know, overcome death by death. No, I'm not. I'm reciting Christian uh, chant, chant about Jesus over overcome death. <clears throat> No, there is no Christian. The second you say Jesus is a prophet, not God, they are no Christian. You are something else. Okay. Let us see here. Finally, it's opening. Read carefully with me. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. It says, There is not one of you but shall come to it, that but shall enter hell. No exception. Do you see it? And this idea of this bridge is taken from the Sabian. And the idea of the whore is taken from the Sabian. That there is women who they are special creatures, who they are very white, and they are contained in their tents, and they will be uh, given. They will. They will. They will uh, treat those who go to heaven in a certain way. And the song I was singing. This is as the person who was in the chat was saying. This is an Orthodox Church chant, and the the same song they sing it in many languages because all Orthodox the same. They share the same prayer, but in different language. Uh, who is the last prophet in Christianity? Because in Judaism, the age of a prophet prophecy is ended to make sense. Well, there is nothing is called the last prophet, but there is a prophet was exist in that time. Let us say the disciple of Jesus. All of them they prophesy in his name. However, uh, uh, prophesying it's it's a it's a word not necessarily mean. Uh, like there is there is many let us say definition for the word prophet. A prophet is somebody he prophesied to you about God. How he do that? He tell you something you do not know about God. So, if I am a person going to the jungle of Brazil, and I met somebody he never heard about about Christ. So I say to him that time will come, and there is a day is going to be judgment day. And I'm using my own words, but I am using the word of God in the same time. I'm prophesying to this person, but doesn't make me really a prophet. So there is a prophet who God, he spoke to him, or God, he inspired him and gave him revelation. And there is people who they prophesy to people about God, which means they inform them about prophecies. which does not make you really a prophet. Now, who is the last prophet? This is not really important for me because, I mean, God is, uh, uh, he is the one who decides who he sent, who he will not. Uh, you know, if you remember, the Messiah, he said, not everyone says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one, uh, you know, who do his will. So they will say, we did miracle in your name, we like prophesy in your name, you know. He said, not everyone, which means there's some of them, they are true disciple of him. And there is uh, some, they are fake. So can God send prophet? Yeah, still now? Yes, he can. How we know? From their fruits, you shall know them. However, I do not need the prophets for me. I'm a believer already. And um, I don't find any reason to listen to anyone save the Lord. The Lord, he already spoke. And the disciple, they wrote his words 
and we have their words too like when we read the book of Acts <clears throat> anyway uh, any Muslim want to say anything But, you know, be careful. There is people they claim to be prophets the same as Muhammad just to earn your money. So if a prophet is coming to take your money from your pocket and they seek his own privilege, obviously he is a fake man. You know what I mean? That's why Jesus, he said from their fruits, you would know them. Very, very, there's a very easy way to find out who is a false prophet or not. The same as Muhammad. Muhammad, he made verses about him, uh, any woman she want to give herself to the prophet. The best of the booty is for the prophet. Uh, Muhammad, if his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. He's a cult leader. All of them, they are the same. All false prophets, cult leaders, they share the same thing. They want to sleep with your wife and they want your money. All of them no exception go study the history of all cult leaders you will find all of them are the same right it looked like Omar is saying something uh, then who was father that Jesus mentioned in his prayer that's a good question uh, Omar the father is the father God is a three person if you say to me how God can be three and one well he's God <laughs> how God can be God then you see if you go in the Quran Omar listen to me carefully you will find that your Quran saying that Jesus is a three but yet he is one but the same verse says don't say Trinity now we don't believe that Jesus is three no you know and we don't believe in what the Quran is saying but the Quran, the same book, saying that don't say Trinity, yet is saying that Jesus is a three and one in the same time. Read carefully with me. <clears throat> this is your Quran. Give me a second so I can zoom in. Listen carefully, Omar. See, I'm trying to help you. I'm not against you. There's nothing personal here, my friend. You are welcome here and, you know, feel free to ask questions. If you like to call me, I will be happy to hear you. The Quran says, commit no excuse in your religion. Okay. Don't say Allah, but the, the truth. Christ Jesus, son of Mary, he was. Between two brackets, does not exist. It's not from the Quran. This is why it's between two brackets. He is a messenger, okay. Write down, uh, uh, Omar, write down, take a note. He is what? A messenger. That's wonderful. He's a man, messenger, okay. And he is his word, okay. He's what? He's the word. And he is a spirit proceeding from Allah. Okay, wonderful. So he is a man, he is a word, he is a spirit. How a three can be one? Are you there, Omar? How he is one. He's a Christ is a man like me and you supposed to, right? Okay. How he is the word of God. He is a spirit proceeding from God, not only spirit. Which means he is a spirit, he is a spirit of God. And he is the word of God. How he can be three, but yet he is one.
Are you there, Omar? The logical answer says, well, if God, he can do as he wish. Right? You, this, you should, I'm helping you. I'm giving you a hand. Okay, God, your God, Allah, he can make Jesus as he wish. He make him three and one at the same time. Well, so God, he can make Jesus three and one at the same time, but God cannot he himself be three and one at the same time. There is, he is no more than uh, in a bracket. How come not to use the word bracket? Use it, no problem. Okay, don't be upset. Use the word bracket. I'm, I'm saying the word bracket is not in the Quran. This is in translation to explain to you. But no problem, my friend. Are you happy? That will not change anything. Still the same. There's no more than this and this and that. Okay. Three and one. Don't be upset, please, from the bracket stuff. We gave you the bracket back. <laughs> hmm? Why Allah don't have a son? Let me show you that the one who wrote the Quran is a stupid. I'm not insulting. I'm just telling you what I believe. And I can prove it easy. Allah don't have a son because he don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> you know, look what the Quran says. Uh, Allah speaking about Allah. To him do the primal, uh, uh, a primal origin of the heaven and the earth. Okay. How can he have a son when he doesn't have a girlfriend? <laughs> that that to prove that the one who call himself Muhammad and Allah as are stupid because a Christian don't believe that God he have sex with Mary God you know forgive me for saying that and then have a baby his name is Jesus we don't believe in that even the Quran says that Mary she is a virgin so what does have to do with this what sahiba and imagine how faithy language he said sahiba not even a wife sahiba mean girlfriend that's why it says consort as you see so how can he have a son and he don't have a girlfriend? Well, look what your God, he just said. Your God, he just confirmed that there's things he cannot do unless he have a girlfriend like me. I'm a Christian prince. I'm single. I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend. Therefore, I don't have a son. So what does that mean? That Christian prince is not able to have a son unless there is a woman. Allah is the same. And look, your God saying, how can? He's questioning the ability. It's not me questioning the ability. How can he? But I thought, I thought God, he can't do anything. What do you mean, how can he? Isn't he God? What do you mean, how can he? Is God. How God can resurrect us from death? Well, he, because he's God, he can do it. How God can create Adam from dust? Well, he can do it, he's God. So all the amazing miracle God he can do, suddenly he cannot have a son because he didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> Obviously the one who made this verse is an idiot. Because the God of the Christians, they don't believe that the God have sex with the woman and they have a son. His name is Jesus. That's number one. Number two, the second you say God, that's mean he's almighty. The second you say almighty, that's mean he can't do anything. Guys, don't forget to watch a video made by... Uh, we have a review, a Muslim, he made a review for me, which is a very important video, priceless. Uh, we post it in Patreon. Uh, this video is in different channel. Don't forget to subscribe to that channel, please. It's a backup channel. So watch it, share it, download it, and let everybody have fun. <clears throat> yeah, the reason we call God Almighty, for he have all the mighty power. That's what Almighty mean. Otherwise, why you call him Almighty? 
Your God is not almighty. Can Allah be a man? Muslim, they say no. So he cannot be almighty. Because almighty, it means there's no limitation of what he can be or what he can do. Correct, guys? The second I say almighty, it means that's it. He's out of limit. He create. He resurrect. He can come to us in, in as a spirit. He can come to us as a man. I mean, he's God. If God cannot do that, who can do that? Me? The second you put limit to your God, that means that your God is a fufu, is a fifi, is a tutu. He's just, just an idol. How an idol can have a son if he don't have a wife? <laughs> My God is a living God. He do not need a wife to have a son. Your God is not. He cannot. And you know, remember that the Quran says that Jesus, he created from the mother bird. Okay, hold on. Allah is the creator. Look, it says the origin of everything is Allah. But he forgot that there is another creator in the Quran. The Quran said, the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, but Christian prince, he did not mention that it says by the leave of Allah, my friend, by the leave of Allah or not his leave. You just admitted that the Jesus is the creator. Which means, right now as we speak, there is birds and creatures are created by Jesus. Who said that? The Quran. How that can be true? Hmm? The answer, very simple, the Muslim, they will say to you, uh, Allah gave him power. My friend, this is your claim, number one. There's no way to prove it. But you just admitted that Jesus the Christ, he can fashion a clay the same as God he created Adam, and he make it in the figure of a creature, whatever the creature, in this case here is a bird, and then he breathe into it. From the breathe of Jesus, the bird is created. The life is given. So now we have, according to Muslims, understanding that Allah, he shared his power of a creation with a person, his name is the Christ. I determined for you out of dust, the like of a firm of a bird, and I breathe into it. And it became a bird by the leave of Allah. So Allah allow him to do that. And I thank you very much. Now, here there is a proof that Allah is the one allowing him. I can say now I am the one who gave Allah the power. I can say now that I am the one who gave Jesus the power to make a, somebody, uh, you know, blind to see. I can claim, the talk is cheap. But what you confirm to us in the Quran, that Jesus, he create exactly as God, he created Adam. And yet, Muhammad, he came 600 years after Jesus. So how he know about Jesus? What he knew about him? He don't even know his correct name. Muhammad, he think that, look, what is the name of the chapter? Look how, look at the fool Muhammad. The chapter name is Al Imran. Al Imran. Okay, who is Imran? The father of Mary. How stupid. Imran is not the father of Mary. Where do you get this from? The stupid Muhammad, he thought, that the same father of Moses, says he is the father of Mary. This is why he says that Mary is a sister of Aaron, which is the brother of Moses. And that make her the daughter of Imran which is the father of Moses and Aaron. Stupid prophet, false prophet. And when the Jews got him busted, they said to him, but what are you talking about? 
there's uh, there's hundreds of years between Aaron and Mary. So to to unearth to cover his ass, he said, "Oh, uh, they used to cover them. Uh, they used to call them by their great names, uh, ancestors." That is very stupid. There is a double mistake here. The Muslim they try to fix it. They say, "Oh, he called her the sister of Aaron." But she is not really his sister. But look, what is the father of Mary in the Quran? Amran. Okay. This is the same name the Muslim believe he is the father of Moses too. So it's obvious. And this is wrong because Mary father is not Amran. Where do you get this from? <laughs> it's obvious. False prophet, he made a stupid mistake and it's too late to take it out from the Quran. Yeah, Moses, Moses is the uncle of Jesus. <laughs> hey, uncle. <laughs> oh, boy. <coughs> and by the way, even Amran, the name he is wrong. Even the name of the father, not only the name of the father of Mary does not exist this way, there is no Amran, the father of, of uh, Moses. His name is, um, uh, you know, the, the stupid, the idiot Muhammad. He doesn't know the difference between Amran and Amram. Amram, not Amran. Right? So what do you think, my friend uh, Omar? Don't you think it's time for you to leave the cult of Islam, Omar? Do you like to call me? Our prophet get power from Allah to see the future? Like what? Eric, let, let me show you your prophet seeing the future. Guys, uh, our friend here, Omar, by the way, is welcome. I hope everybody will, will, will speak nice to him. He sounds like a nice guy. Like you see, he's not saying bad things. He's not, you know, he's trying to defend his religion. And this is his right. So I, you know, I advise everybody to speak nice to him. Please be gentle, gentle with him. Uh, Omar, I want you to listen carefully. Your prophet, he knew the future. Look at this. This is your prophet telling us about the future. Let us see where we can find the hadith. <coughs> Oh boy. Oh no, I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm just trying to find the hadith to show you what kind of a prophet you are. Um, for some reason, I cannot see it. Hold on. Until we find the hadith, it says that your prophet said that judgment day will not come until the Roman became the major population of the world. <laughs> <laughs> in his time Muhammad the room was like a big empire and the fool he thought that the Roman Empire all of those empires are Roman they are not over all those are countries occupied by the Roman and they are not the majority of population of anywhere even at that time but Muhammad is claiming that judgment day will not come till the Roman became the major population of the earth. I'm just trying to find the hate in English. I have it in front of me in Arabic, but the problem always. Uh, here we go. This is your prophet who knew the future, giving false prophecy. 
the Messenger of Allah said, the last hour would come when the Roman would form the majority among the people. What is the population of Italy right now? What do you think? Well, the Roman did rule already. So the Bible is speaking about prophecy and prophecy happened. What is the population of the Roman? Italy. Is that a false prophecy? He's not talking about them ruling. He's talking about them. They will be the, the, the majority among the people in the world. Which means the major population. There are 60 million. Indonesia three times more than the Roman. Yeah, this is Sahih. This is Sahih Muslim. Here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. Do you like to call me Omar? I like to speak to you. You sound like a decent person. Anytime you feel like you want to talk to me, just text me in Skype, and even if you want, we can talk under under there. All right. In case you are shy to speak in public. As you see, Omar, this is a this is a false prophet. All his prophecies are stupid. I mean, this is an authentic hadith claiming something, and obviously it's stupid. How the Roman, how the Roman will be, became the majority, the majority of population by the Judgment Day? What will happen? The Roman, they are they destroy China. They will destroy. I mean, Indonesia alone is three times more than them. Sixty million. They live in one building in China. <laughs> What 60 million? <laughs> Muhammad, you never heard of the Chinese? Huh? No, this is going to be a prophet of God. Roman, European majority. My friend, even the European are minority. They are not the majority. What European majority? Secondly, Roman are not uh, all European. Roman is the Italian. The rest are not Roman. Actually, the Roman, the, the rest are were occupied by the Roman, and they were enemy to them. So this is a false statement. Go do a little search about who are they, the Roman, and you will see. False prophet. You know, a false prophet is somebody who prophesies false prophecy, as simple as that, and this is false prophecy. I can come with a prophecy better than your prophet. Let me tell you one. Um, it's going to rain somewhere in Indonesia tomorrow. And uh, women, they will have their period. Many women. Hmm. Okay, I'm prophet now. And there is uh, many cats, they will say meow. And dogs will say who? What about the Quran? Muhammad he prophesying that hail come from mountains in heaven. How in the world that can be? <clears throat> hmm? What do you think about your prophet speaking about 
hail coming from mountains in heaven. Do you already believe in such a thing? That there is mountains in heaven where Allah he break hail from it? <coughs> Look how the Muslims, they fabricate translation. Read carefully. It says, and he sent down of the cloud that are like mountains were in hail. <laughs> doesn't say that. <laughs> how we can get them busted that the Quran doesn't say that? Anyone know? Very easy. Change the translator. Let's see the front translator. Hold on. The front liar. All of them they are liars. This is why their translation doesn't match with each other. Hmm? Okay. He bring down load of hail from the sky, striking with it whoever he wills. The, the word mountains is gone. This liar? No mountains. Mountain disappear. Magic. Ding, 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 chicka, chicka, chicka. Mountain is gone. Change the translator. That's it. This guy, he ate the mountain like the goat who ate the Quran. Okay. Like mountains. You see, the, the, the between bracket, like mountains. That doesn't say like mountains. It says mountains from mountains. Like, what the heck? Change the translator. Uh, let us see different Muslim and he sent down from the heaven mountains where is the hill what's wrong with this guy he is very close to the truth do you see it <laughs> the rest they were I didn't like same as you know it's a cloud it's a, it doesn't say cloud my friend it says he sent down from Mountains in heaven, hail. Let's read the interpretation so we can get them busted easy. Chapter 24, verse number 43. This is your official website. Yes, Omar. Who are translation? I don't know. They are in Muslim translation, my friend. It's not my translation. I don't care. For me, I speak Arabic. Right? Verse number 43. You are my witness. Read with me carefully. Here we go. 43. Let us see. Does it say uh, like mountains, as if it's mountains, or it says it is mountains in heaven? Here we go. This website now is not working again. You have to click again and again. Come on, display. We have to wait for this website to open. He's so slow like Allah. My like, come on. Oh boy. Yeah, they need to see inshallah, right? It's not opening. No, this is not from my side. This is their website because everything works, you know, in different website. This is always this website is is bad. You know, I, I notice I think because when I go live and I use it, so many people open it. So like they they have a very cheap bandwidth uh, server, you know. So it doesn't work. I think there's many people now clicking. Here we go now, finally. All right, read with me, uh, Omar. Are you there, Omar? Omar, my friend, re read with me. This is Tafsir ibn Abbas, the cousin of your prophet. Read carefully. Read, read. We will talk about judgment here, no problem. Hold on. He said, He sent down from heaven mountains wherein 
is heal. Do you see it, Omar? Let us continue reading. He says, He sent down hail from mountains in heaven. <laughs> Now what they will say? They will say, this is Da'if Quran, brother. Hey, brother, this is Da'if Quran. No, see me. It doesn't say, you know, the, 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 the voice of uh, people of Lut. Do you see it? He says he sent down hail from mountains in heaven. I mean, how clear we can make it more than this. This is a prophet. He prophesied about where hell is coming from. This is prophecy. Nobody knows where hell coming from at that time. Muhammad is prophesying. He will tell us where the hell coming from. So according to Muhammad God, he have a storage of mount, uh, of hail in mountains. He break it and he sent it to us. He, you know, hail is made to hit us with it, and he break it from hail from uh, from mountains. Hmm, makes sense. I saw that in a Avatar, Avatar movie. Did you watch Avatar, Omar? This is Tafsir Ibn Abbas. Let us change it. Maybe this Tafsir is wrong, my brother. Let us go to Ajlalain. This is Ajlalain, very big scholar. It says, and he sent down from the heaven out of mountains. <laughs> This one is even making it more clear. <laughs> he sent down from heaven out of mountains. Min jibal in fiha. All right. I mean, what is that? This is Quran. And this is Muhammad. So if this is a lie, that's mean the rest is a lie. That's it. Do we agree, people? If this is a lie, Muhammad is a liar because he's claiming that he received this from his God. So what do you think, Omar? Do you like to call me my friend and you would like to leave Islam? None of his prophecy come to Baba. My friend, earthquake happen every day. What, uh, you know, what uh, prophecy about judgment day? Guys, Muhammad prophecy about uh, uh, earthquake. There is earth in Japan. They, they have a thousand earthquake every day, even more. <laughs> I saw a dream that Turkey will suffer from a very huge earthquake, but doesn't make me a prophet, my friend. Because this country always have earthquake. It's not something new. So if I saw that, maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't know the reason I saw it, but I saw that, but doesn't make me a prophet. And maybe Turkey is going to face a huge earthquake, but that does not make me a prophet. <clears throat> so if I say there is rain will come, it doesn't make me a prophet. If I say earthquake will happen, it's happened always. This is why it's, it's called earthquake. It is something that exists in the earth since the beginning. And if you, I can go any prophet over any prophecy or prophet you said, and we will laugh at them. All of them, they are stupid. My friend Omar, I advise you to leave Islam right now. I mean, you are smarter than this man. Do you like to call me? Omar, do you like to call me life? <clears throat> What do you think? Do you like to call me Omar and denounce Islam? I can't tell you are leaving. It's just a matter of time, if not if not immediately now. Do you like to call? And then I will explain to you about the Messiah. What do you say? I will answer any question you have about the Messiah. 
in the same time I mean this verse this verse alone forget about the rest let us say Muhammad he said 100 uh, uh, statement they are truthful but this is Quran and it's a lie so Muhammad is a liar there's no way his God told him that do you agree Omar Omar do you agree that there is no way that God he told Muhammad that he'll come from mountains do you agree with that <clears throat> what do you think well, a good man he protect women <laughs> my friend your prophet was raving slaves what saved slaves which slave he's you know here you know he saved your prophet he slaughtered women he slaughtered men he killed children he raped them I mean what are you talking about and you know let us say for the sake of argument I am a good person but I claim to be a prophet and this is a false prophecy that's mean I'm a, I'm a, that's it he's lying he's a liar he can't be a good man he is a liar this is cannot be from God you have to agree either Muhammad is a prophet of, from God and God told him this which is stupid that's mean him and his God are stupid or Muhammad is a fabricator and there's no God told him this if somebody he come to us and he is very nice person gentleman very very nice and he claimed to be prophet and he said this he's a liar doesn't matter what he who is you know who is he liar is a liar he's a fraud because he claimed that this is received from from his God So what do you say, my friend Amar? Do you like to call me and leave Islam? You don't need to call it, I mean, leave it or Islam right away. I mean, if you have a question, feel free. What about you call me and tell me about your prophet, the good guy? What do you think? <coughs> do you like to call me and tell me about your prophet, the good guy? Just to show you that he is not good? And there's nothing good about him? I would love to hear you telling me about the good guy Muhammad. Obviously, my friend, you have no idea. Muhammad is a very evil man. Right? I just opened Skype actually. <coughs> Are you there, Omar? All right, guys. Well, we are not going to put pressure in our friend Omar here. He sounds a gentleman, nice guy. You are more than welcome anytime, my friend. You can call me, you can text me. I will be happy uh, to help you. You know? Uh, but I can tell you are coming from a good family and your parents did a really good job. You are a gentleman. You did not use a bad language. And uh, I really, I'm, I'm happy to have you. All right? We pray for you. Uh, you know all of us in a certain time we you know we are lost somehow 
we are looking for truth. We hear many things, you know, they, you know, contradiction. The Muslims they say Muhammad is amazing. Christian prince, you say Muhammad is bad. Okay, but somebody's lying here. But you see, my friend, we are showing you this is what the Quran is saying, and this is what your scholars are saying. This is not Christian prince saying your prophet said that. I'm just sharing what your prophet said according to your scholars and according to the Quran. The truth, my friend, the truth will set you free. Nothing else. And the Messiah, he said, I am the truth. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the resurrection. As simple as that. And because really we care for you as a Christian, we will be happy, you know, to invite you to accept the Messiah as your as your Savior. Muhammad, he cannot be a prophet. What kind of what kind of God he promised me women with no panties in heaven? I mean, this is not God. This is a pimp. I mean, you do not need to be genius, Omar, to notice that this is Shaitan. Satan is the one who you know would try to tempt me by women there and women here. It's not God. God would have promised me if I believe in Him. Long line of women waiting for me. Why? What is the where is the decency? He's God. He's holy. You see, if I come to your house, let us say Omar, he have a birthday, and a Christian prince is coming to the birthday of Omar. Okay, Christian prince, do you have a gift for me? I say, sure, Omar. I have a truck loaded with women. What your mother will say about your friend? Who brought you a lot of women to sleep with? She will kick me out of your house. Is that true, Omar? Your mother, there's no way she will allow such a thing to be in her house. A man bringing a lot of women for sex as a gift to her son. Well, what a different. Your prophet, he is saying exactly the same. I will give you a gift in your birthday. I will give you a big, huge truck full of women have no panties. And where? In the house of God, not in the house of my mother or your mother with my respect to her. I mean, if, you, if your mother will not allow this to happen in her house because she is a decent woman, how God allowed it? You see, when God, he created Adam, he created one Eve. He did not create for him a bunch of women with no panties. He created Adam and Eve, and Eve she is created from Adam, which means they are the same. Not women are made, you know, soft in their skin, took me 1,000 years, and they have one name, whore, and all of them. Uh, uh, Omar, let me show you this. Do you like white, Omar, um, uh, white, white women, Omar, or you like uh, darker skin? What do you like? Do you hear me, Omar? What kind of woman you like, my friend? Do you like women who they are, who are very white? Or you like darker skin? Look what your prophet, he promised you. This is Sahih Bukhari. That women in heaven, which Allah will, promise, will, will provide to you, you can see through their bones. Have you ever heard of a stupid promise like this? Women in heaven? What do you mean, what women? Don't you know that your prophet, he promised you women in heaven? Look what he said. That those women, the houris, the whore, they are so beautiful to the point you can see through the marrow of their bones. I mean, if Muhammad is not mentally ill, he is sick. Because, let me, let me show you how women, according to Muhammad, look like. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right.
Let me show you what your prophet is promising you, my friend. I mean, this is a prophet of God. <laughs> if this is a prophet of God, so... <laughs> Omar, I want you to look at the screen carefully and tell me if you like what you see. This is what you will get in heaven, my friend. What do you think, Omar? Isn't it beautiful? You know, I avoid really, especially at night, to look at those pictures because I'm, I get tempted. I'm single. I mean, look at this. I mean, how we can resist this? A prophet of God promising me in Sahih al-Bukhari, which is very authentic, that women in heaven, they will be like this. And supposedly this is the best of the gift of God. I mean, look at her eyes, man. I'm so crazy about her eyes. Look at this. I wish I can hold her skull right now. Look at this pretty, beautiful. You see, and not only that, in this case, you do not need lipstick anyway. I mean, look at this. She is very pretty, pretty sexy. And notice here the high heels. I mean, that's alone is something. Oh, the image here focusing in the high heels and the ass. Look at the ass. Is that, is that poopoo or what? This is heaven. Omar, you are the man, man. This is really heaven? Is that really you believe that this is the garbage? This will be a promise of God? Omar, look, uh, this is my future uh, whore. Look what she is doing. Unbelievable. What is that, man? That's so hot. Look at this. Look at these positions. Oh, boy. I'm afraid if I show you more, many of those singles here, they will get tempted and you know, they will do bad stuff. They might commit suicide, you know, because they are they cannot, they cannot handle this beauty. This is too much beauty. I mean, we have to be honest, uh, honest here, you know, like, I mean, this is a lot of beauty, you know, what is this? Look at this. Look at this, man. This is heaven. It cannot be like this. I think there is a hiding message in that. <laughs> That's a good one, Omar. <laughs> Actually, I see a hiding message here. Let me see. Hold on. You see, look at this. <clears throat> Guys, uh, Omar, he is, uh, uh, he is right. There is a hiding message here in the hadith. Do you see the hiding message? I mean, it's obvious. There is a hiding message there. Who can deny that? There is a hiding message, Omar. You are right. I see it hiding there, obviously. Look at this, you know. It's so clear. It's a big message, actually. Just wait until she go to the bathroom, and then you will see how big it is. <laughs> you are funny, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. We are going. We are going out of control with this madness. You know uh, what hiding message, Omar? Come on, you are smarter than this. What do you think the hiding message in this position here, Omar? Is that something about a nuclear weapon or proton and neutron? What do you? <laughs> Oh, look at this one. Oh boy. Mean. I mean, this guy who is taking x ray pictures for those women, he have. <laughs> one day I will die from laughing. I will stop breathing. Honest to God. 
It doesn't matter how I repeat the same story each time I hear it, I, I die laughing. As if I'm hearing it first time. I mean, look at this madness. And look, this is exactly what your prophet said in the hadith. Read it. Exactly. The Huris who will be so beautiful and pure and transparent, transparent, the marrow of their bones, the marrow of the bones of their legs will be seen through the bones and the flesh. Sahih al-Bukhari. It doesn't say that, see me. I mean, this promise alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Those Arab, they are obsessed with white women. They like white women. So, he, in order to seduce them and tempt them to die for him, he exaggerated with the stupidity of his promise. So, it became women who they are transparent. Hey, wife, I didn't see you. Are you here? Yes, honey, I'm transparent. Huh? Are you transparent more than jellyfish? Yes, I am. <laughs> Are you going to have a woman or jellyfish? Transparent? Are you there, Omar? <clears throat> No, I believe Omar is going to leave Islam soon or later, sooner or later. Uh, I mean, like no way in heaven we can get those women. God is holy, you know. Here we go, Omar. He left Islam. Look what Omar he said, guys. Did you see what Omar said? Omar he just agreed that there is no way in heaven such a thing will be. God is holy, I agree with you. Omar, he just decided to leave Islam because you just ag agreed that there is no way. No way. Omar saying to you guys, there is no way. It's impossible. You see the word no way? No way. In heaven we can get those women. God is holy, you know. I'm happy for you, Omar. If you like to call me and to, to say that you decide to leave Islam, I will be happy to listen to you. You just you just decided to go. There's no way you are right. I mean, this promise is not even fit for, for, for an idiot. Even an idiot would laugh at it. And there's no way for a smart person like Omar, he will believe in such a garbage. <clears throat> so what do you think, Omar? You like to call me? Uh, a Muslim sent me this message. I don't know. <laughs> Can you admit on air that miracle of Muhammad was he was the only prophet that he was ever older than his own father-in-law <laughs> this guy he's saying it's a miracle that Muhammad is older than his father-in-law it's a miracle <clears throat> what is the miracle he is older than his father-in-law can you admit in here <laughs> <coughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah, let's see. We have a caller. Let's see if he's a Muslim. Yeah, he hung up. Yeah, let us call him back. <coughs> I'm going to be going through Christian princes, sex, and Allah. Yes, this guy actually takes pride in his works. Mm. And as you can see this image, he's received a lot of great... My friend, we made a video already about it and everybody is going to go and watch. Go watch and die laughing. We have a video already about it. Go and die laughing. You just get, you just get your profit busted, you stupid. Let me find you the video. Hold on. As long as you are happy about the video, look what happened. Guess what? You Muslim will regret having a guy like this. Let me pause the link. <clears throat> Here we go. This is a video. It's called Amazing Review. Amazing review of a brother Farid six and Allah book. Go watch it and die laughing. We are the one who is playing it, not you. We love it. Stupid. <clears throat> yeah, don't forget to uh, to watch this video. All right. If you uh, if you click it. Then you go here, and this is the name of the video, and this is in my other account, Christian Prince, which have a small number, as you see, of subscribers. I don't use it much. It's just a backup account, and this is the link for the video. Go watch it and die laughing. I want Muslims, that they are proud about their brother, to post this video in their channel. It have all what he said there. Here we go. Potato, 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 potato. Stupidity is amazing. We go back to our topic. So, what do you think, uh, Omar? <clears throat> Are you there, Omar? Omar, I'm waiting for you, man. You are the man. What do you think? Are you going to leave Islam? Already you did, actually, you know. But I'd like to hear it from you. <clears throat> so what do you say? I need time to do my research. Okay. Well, Omar, you know, Omar, he's a smart man. I Actually, I agree with him that always you should research and you know don't take uh, what people say to you for granted look what Omar he said <clears throat> very good answer I need time to do my research <clears throat> it's difficult to find out but I thank you for showing me those uh, 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 to me well you are more than welcome Omar I'm really happy to help you and don't forget to subscribe and you can come again and remember, the Muslim, they will say to you, is lying to you, blah, 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 blah. But remember, anything I say, I show it in the screen. And this is your Islamic text, your Islamic translator, your Islamic uh, explanation. I have nothing to do with it. It's not me who say that he sent down from heaven, from mountains in it, hail. This is not Christian Prince talking. That's not me. Ibn Abbas is not my cousin, he is the cousin of your prophet. Same as Ajalali, he is your scholar. They will try to get away, go around that Christian prince, he lied to you. But as you see, we are showing everything. <coughs> All right?
But anyway, anytime you feel like you want to talk to me, <clears throat> the admin already they gave you my Skype. Uh, uh, this website never worked. Look at this website. I mean, this is the most stupid website ever. Never worked this website. <laughs> oh boy. <coughs> I mean, even what he will search. <coughs> Everything I said, <clears throat> you see, you can freeze the screen uh, later. You can play the video. Sorry, my, I'm losing my, my voice. Uh, <clears throat> and you can type, <clears throat> man, I lost my voice. Hold on. <clears throat> Speaking for many hours, but I can do. <clears throat> you see, like now, uh, Omar. Uh, let us say you want to search for this hadith. You don't even know the number. You can say, okay, I'm going to this website, sunnah.com, and I'm going to type there exactly those words. Kissing you, I would not have kissed you. Huh. As if you are copying and paste, and then type the exact word in the search engine. You will find the hadith. As simple as that. So, <clears throat> anything I showed you in the video, Freeze the video for a second, type exact same words in Google search engine, you will find them. And then, you know, you have it. Additional to that, the admins were, were posting the links uh, in, in the chat so people can have it. You know, <clears throat> let us see this guy. Hello? 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 Okay, he is using the internet of the neighbors. <coughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go soon because I'm getting, I'm losing my voice and my eyes hurt from a long time. So anyway, guys, I want to say thank you to Omar to be, for being here. <clears throat> already I can tell he left Islam, so at least today we have a, one person who is out of Islam already. And today we are blessed with many things and we learned a lot of things. And please don't forget to download the videos, share them with your friends, and don't forget to download this video too, which Muslims are refusing re re reviewing one of my books. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I lost the link. I paused the link already, you can, you can check it out. Uh, so here we go, Phil is posting the, uh, the link for the hadith. Uh, you know, we are really blessed. And today is a lot easier to expose Islam. You see, when I started exposing Islam a long time ago, all those websites are not exist. Not a single hadith was in Arab, in English. So in order to do the job, um, Actually, I mean, I can't can imagine how I, I do. I used to hold a camera in my hand, camcorder, and I bought one, cost me a lot of money uh, uh, because at that time they were very expensive. And you know, the old days, the computer, how they used to be, I mean, the, the screen, you know, I don't know if you remember. So I hold the camera in my hand. I don't even have like a stand. And then I read and I'm recording with the camera. And then after that, I need to download the video from the camcorder to the computer and the computers are very slow you can't imagine and then after that you have to do editing and convert the file and after that is going to take many hours to load the videos in youtube this is how it was hard to make a video even 10 minutes for me actually the iranian tv <clears throat> they made the, they made the program uh, about the most uh, active ch channel, uh, like the, the Islamophobic, Islamophobia, <laughs> anti-Islam. And the Iranian government, they choose my video from all the internet as an example. So with this little tiny equipment, I was able to reach all the way to the government of Iran. And every month I receive 
a ban of video from the government of Pakistan. Pakistan is very active. They they send uh, YouTube. We ban this video. We ban this video. It's a threat for security. I mean, imagine a country have nukes are afraid from a Christian prince. They are watching Christian prince. Their, their people are dying in the street from hunger. People have no houses. There is no electricity. There is no health. And they are worried about my video. This is the concern of Pakistan. <clears throat> uh, they think they can fight us. But when they fight us, they approve us to be right. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. Don't forget to download the videos. As you know, I don't keep videos in my channel for long. I keep them there for a little time until you guys download them. If you have a, an Instagram, don't forget to subscribe. If you have Minds, this is my Minds account. And this is a Patreon for those who care. And this is additional account in YouTube, which we speak about different topics. It's called the Quality of Life M27. So subscribe there too, because there we don't speak about Islam. We speak about things about us, you know, as a family, as a Christians, uh, about uh, uh, healthy stuff to do, uh, healthy, men, you know, let us say, uh, mentality, uh, how to make choices. So this is different account which have nothing to do with any of the cult of Islam. It's like, let us say, it's like a coffee for us as a Christian, and for sure non Christians are welcome uh, uh, to talk about things out of this garbage. It's like a break from the cult of Islam. All right. So thank you all for being here. Um, until I see you tomorrow, I hope if I can, if I cannot the day after, uh, for sure, you know, you will see my post if I'm going live on air. But mostly I will be live on air. I mean, why not? Unless my internet is not good. My internet speed is not bad, by the way. It's really good. But uh, usually the download speed is so fast. Extremely fast. But the upload speed, sometimes it goes down to zero. And when you do, and this is why most of people don't notice it, you know. When I told the people here, like, you know, I told them, this internet here is really bad. They said, we know, we watch, nothing happened. Yeah, because the speed is very good for download, which people usually do. You know, you watch videos, movies, you need download. Upload is someone doing broadcast like me or posting videos that is upload. So sometimes the upload speed go down to zero and I have to wait for like sometime in two hours, three hours. That's what happened today. But anyway, as long as at the end of the day we can do it, God is good. So I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you all. And enter we see you again. Christ is Lord. And Muhammad get busted every day. By the help of the Muslims and by the help of Muhammad and by the help of the Muslim websites and their translations and for sure by the help of the, and the guidance of our Lord the Messiah. Glory to his name. His name is powerful. He is a miracle. No one like him and nothing like him. He is the Alpha, he is the Omega. He is the beginning, he is the end. He is the Messiah. His name is amazing, yet his action is more amazing. His name is beautiful, but his teaching is even more beautiful. He is God, yet he is so humble to wash our feet. He is a master, but yet he is a servant. He is powerful, but yet he is so merciful. He is holy, but yet he loved the sinners. That is my Lord, my friend. That is my Lord. And if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? This is a Christian Prince while with you, and I will see you again. Christ is Lord. I mean to that. Take care.